All right. <laughs> See if I can get this tuned perfectly to the, the tune of uh, whatever the hell this is. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. All right, post it. For six hours? I think it's possible. <laughs> Advertise it. Wait, can I stream on both profiles at the same time? Probably not. I wish I could. That'd be nice. That'd be sweet. Oh, Yahoo? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I <clears throat> I want to start by by coloring it like right away, like right off the bat, just go and color. But there's some problems with it, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go in straight away and color as as badly as I want to, as badly as I feel like I I could just go in there and do it. So. Well, let's just fix those little teeny problems. They're little ones, okay? And and I know it looks a little crappy right now. I'm not gonna really clean up the lines too much because, of course, I'm just editing them to color it. So, no point. <sighs> All right. <laughs> you can take away that X. It doesn't really matter. It's not needed. I don't even know. What, that's his tail right there. So if you hear the music glitching all over the place, just letting you know that the music has been modded a little bit. I, I added a, a glitch in in the music, so uh, unfortunately you won't really hear it. Like I mean, you won't really, 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 really hear it glitching up. Uh, but it's not your internet connection if you do hear it. It's not that, all right, it's just me. I did it because of YouTube. So that's why there's a little glitch in the, the music. Uh, if you remember my previous streams, there's no there's no glitch, but here, of course. Uh, <clears throat> the live stream, and this is one of the reasons why uh, a lot of my stuff now are, are the way they are. Uh, the live stream will start here and then end somewhere else. So, for now, it's a little bit of a, a YouTube test out, see how it works out. Alright, let's get this line right here straight. I want this line to be like right here. I think that's where it belongs, and, and then this would be like here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know you guys are probably like, what the hell, let's find the way it was! Mm. I know, it was, but the, I think its head was like, it was like a little too small, and then it was like way high, and his arm was like super long, and then there was some other stuff, and I just can't unsee it. I want to unsee it, but I just can't, I can't, my mind won't allow it to happen. What is Yahoo? Stop saying that. Are you from Yahoo? Cause you keep saying Yahoo. <laughs> he says he's trying to bring Yahoo back, yo. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. I think I... You may have poked me earlier, and I think I left a message, but you didn't actually read it. Just... Eyeball that for a second. I think I sent you a message back, though. I have so much art stuff to do. How am I supposed to be able to do all this stuff and then, and then take commissions on the side? Like, it's tough. It's a tough one.
Yeah, so I will be skipping around on tracks. Just because it's a YouTube video doesn't mean shit. I mean, uh, crap. Center! <laughs> Can you guys hear me? If you guys can't hear me, then there's no point, right? Hear me say stuff. Come on. Affirm that I can say stuff. You can hear it. Okay, that's the tail, okay? It's not a, a thing, alright? So, just letting you know now that it's not a thing. Alright, so when I'm gonna color stuff, I think this is good right here. Uh, what the? Is that, is that okay? I think it's not okay. <laughs> you hear me? What is that? Like, I feel like his head is too far up. And there's no freaking way to fix it. Like, what is that? Uh, yeah, it's good enough for me. His head looks like a balloon. <laughs> looks big. I made it a little bit... A little bit too big. But. Isn't this supposed to be like sharper? This is supposed to be like. Uh. What do I know? I chose this this stream to freaking modify all the freaking parts of the drawing. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? I should do that before the stream and be like, oh yeah, I'm good now. I'm straight. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> oh man, I think what the problem is, alright, <laughs> I know I'm laughing at my own stuff here, but <laughs> let me read all this stuff, oh cool, Not, nah, there's nothing here. <laughs> Stop it. Like, so it's just got a link to originally. Like, here it is. I see it. Oh. <laughs> nah, it's nothing, dude. It's just fighting. They're fighting each other. It's the end of a Pokemon battle. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, so. When I, well, before I start coloring anything, I usually go through and I correct all, well, I correct as much as I possibly can correct on stuff that I feel like is not scaled properly or if there's like a mistake. Usually there, when I sketch the stuff, there's a mistake and I leave it alone because I, I usually am tired as hell after I'm done working on something so I don't really work on it. And then when I come back to color it, then I go in and I correct that mistake and whatever else is there. Usually that's what I, what I do. Something weird about this one. <laughs> Can't quite put my thumb on it. But I think today is one of those days where the editing is a little bit heavier than usual. <laughs> a lot heavier than usual. Like, I don't get it. Usually I would already have finished, like, pretty much correcting stuff when I sketched it out. Yeah, it is. It is what it is. Yeah, I know the character's position kind of weird, though. <laughs> Alright, well, anyway. I think while I'm working on the lines, I'll actually go through and I'll correct a couple more stuff to try to get it to look, you know, more correct. I don't know. You call it that. I feel like the head's big, but I feel like when I start doing the circles, the head will get smaller. I feel like it. It's a feeling. All right. Boom. We're gonna go ahead and erase everything. Well, not everything, but we're gonna we're gonna draw maybe about fifty percent opacity or forty-eight, whatever, over the entire thing, like so. 
I would say we're just lowering, lowering the opacity. That's all we're doing. We're doing up the lines, and the only reason why we're doing that is so we can see the lines underneath it. Of course, if you're working in colored lines, you'd want to uh, darken the whole thing. You don't have to, but it helps if you darken the whole thing because the lines don't look dark. They don't look uh, as dark, and you can actually start to see the colors that you're using. Uh, since I'm using, for the most part, almost all the same colors in this, I'm not going to actually, uh, not actually do that. Oh, what would I do that for? Why would I do such things? <laughs> I just realized that you guys cannot see my navigator, which is interesting because the navigator has some stuff in it that eh, shouldn't be in there. So I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Hats off to OBS Broadcaster for his fantastic ability to do all this craziness. All right, let's go ahead and do, I'm, I'm gonna leave it as one flat layer. It's already locked already and set as a background layer, so I don't have to worry about having too many problems with that. But let's do, uh, I'm gonna start off with the head. I'm gonna start off with Luc Lucario's head because he's more, he's more complete, I would say, in this. I don't see many issues with his on his end. I mean, his ear's a little big here, but I can correct that with just the lines. In fact, you know what? For this one, I'm actually going to darken the whole thing. I don't usually do it for these because it's the Pokemon stuff, and I usually do that for other stuff like, I don't know, other art. But for this one, I will do it. I will darken the whole thing, but it's not going to be darkened with black. It's going to be darkened with like the, the darkest gray tone in the whole thing. And then I'll just give it one... One 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 over with it. Woo, that's too much. I mean, a passive is too heavy. Wow. There you go. I feel like there was more in that corner than than the rest of it. Let me see that. Yeah, there is. Whoa, never mind. <laughs> All right, done. Yeah, I don't normally really do it with the Pokemon stuff, but I'm gonna do it this time because I want to make it as as defined as possible and show you as much as possible as to what I do. So I don't know if you can see this tab right here in the live stream. You might be able to see that. It's the one on the left hand side. <laughs> He's holding a straw. Yes he is. Um, anyway, he absolutely is holding a straw. You got it right the first time. All right, I'm going to go with the 4PX uh, with line tool. This is the line tool. So out of the shape tools over here in this corner, I'm going to go with the line tool here. And I'm going to draw a line. This is how I do it, okay? Just give, give, giving you little pointers, you know. And this is all in Photoshop CS3 because, of course, CS4, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> all right, let me try five. Five's good. Boom, there you go, one line. Got one line in there. And it's funny, because I pointed out the issue with the ear, and I ended up starting on the ear instead of like the rest of the head. Funny. All right, there we go. Oh shit, I mean hell, I skipped a whole bunch of steps right there. <laughs> Okay, so let me go back. You're going to have plenty of time for me to say it over and over and over and over because I'm going to do it over and over and over. You draw a line, all right? Boom. You have The line is a little too, uh, is that vertical? Yeah, too vertical. So you want to flip it a little bit to a, like a diagonal angle, and then you want to stop like that. And then you're going to go back to edit. I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but I can see it here. Gonna go to edit and gonna go to free transform, or you can hit control T. Whatever whatever works for you. And then you're gonna get this nice thing right here. And then you're gonna turn it. You're just gonna click on any part of the outside till you see those little arrows pointing in opposite directions, and then you're gonna turn it nice and neat. And then you're gonna hit this this button right here, which is transform. I know you can see that. That one shows up in the stream. It should it should. Oh, okay, it doesn't. <laughs> Whoops. All right, I'm probably going to have to actually add that into there. So give me a second. I'm going to add that tab in there so you can see that. That sucks it's not in there. What the hell? 
All right, I'm gonna add one more window so you can actually see that part. Do do do. Okay. Nope, not that one. No, we don't need that one really. Here it is. All right. Alright, there we go. Now you can kind of see it. There you go. <laughs> Alright, so see that little symbol in the, in the middle there? That is what we're using. So I'm going to go back to it now and uh, see, I'll, I'll mouse over it. I don't know if you can see that. Let me go away. But it's going to be this little thing right here. It says transform right there. I'm going to click on that. Well, it doesn't say transform unless you hover over it, but right there. And now you have this nice square. This is this is the square that you want. If I left a line like this, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I'm going to actually do it in a second. If I left a line like that, though, you won't get that square. So you won't have all this area to work in. It's not saying that you can't possibly go and work these lines like this without having that to get this line. But it would be, like, super hard. It would be really hard. And Photoshop will start doing some crazy things to you, too. So, if you were, oh, sorry, I, I'm not going to skip to that step right now. Let me go back to what I was doing here. All right, so what I did was I went to the uh, eraser tool and I clicked on it. I clicked on it and it asked me the question if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to rasterize the image, which means that it takes it and turns it from a vector to a rasterized image, which is instead of vector points is now pixels. So, I mean, it was actually pixels either way, but with the vector line, let me see if I can show you that. Let me see if you can see that. You can still see pixels in there. But you can see that the vector lines are here. These are these are the lines that are like vectored and then they the, the pixels within them are filled in kind of sorta of behind the vectored lines. Which is kind of what's happening with this. So right now, if I go and modify this line again, it's no longer a vector and it's going to look like some crap. So don't do that. I mean, if you're once you're done, you're done. That's it. Just leave it alone and move on to the next line. Unless you have to edit it. If you do have to edit it, however, you're probably going to have to do the whole damn line over. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, bud. That's so nice of you. All right, so I'm going to do the next ear. Thank you. My apologies to anybody who actually enjoys the music that I play in my live stream. I'm so sorry. I had to do a little modification to the music this time. So it, I'm pretty sure it sounds a little bit glitchy. Like it's got like a, like it's skipping a step or something. It is. I actually did that myself. <laughs> I modified it. I modified the output of it actually. So. Still sounds good. Still has a, still a little bit of something going on in the background, but it's not it's not uh it's not gonna sound as good as it usually does on Picardo or you know when I'm streaming something else. Sorry. And for some odd reason, I feel like YouTube's still gonna flag my video for for the music anyway. I feel like it's gonna happen. I just feel like it. I feel it in my bones. <laughs> <clears throat> Also, I just moved my microphone closer to my face, so uh, you might hear a little less distortion, but you also might hear a little clipping on the audio as well, because I did not adjust it at all. Alright, this is giving me a perfect opportunity to actually show you what happens if you do not turn it, because I don't know if you noticed, on all these lines that I just drew, I actually turned the shape. I turned it, well, it's, it's a shape, it's a line tool. I turned it. And then I turned it back. So I went to transform it, and then I I turned it diagonally, left it, and then transformed it again 
and then turned it back to the position that I needed it, which was like straight up and down. But then I hit transform instead of deselecting. I hit transform, and that's how I got that. Uh, that's how I got that shape, that square. But it's like a diagonal square, which is what you want. So if you went, for example, they're both these. Both of these characters have the same. Um, you have the same kind of color to them so that's the reason why I kind of shared their color and that's the reason why I was like there really is no point in darkening the whole thing because all the variations of colors like the gray is all in the face and the yellow is all in in the body area here so there's really no point but anyway so I'll just draw for this leg here it's not a good spot to do it but I'll just I'll just just give you an example of what, what will happen if you or the back of his head even though I'm not going to use this line I'm just gonna draw the line and I'm gonna draw it kinda kinda to the shape that I want it. Alright, now I'm gonna go to right here where I told you to click earlier. Edit, retransform, and morph. So now you can see transform is highlighted. Oh, well look at that. I can't freaking modify that. I mean maybe I can. By the way, your zoom tool does not work when you uh, transform. Just wanted to let you know a heads up. Uh, zoom in as much as you can beforehand. You can still use your sliders, see? You can still use those. But you can't zoom in at all. All right, so now I'm gonna try to warp it to the shape of, of the side of the head. Look at that. You see what happens? It's really difficult. See that? That is like, that is complete rubbish. I mean, if you needed a line to look like that, and then check this out. Check what happens when I try to modify this again. Because that's not right. <laughs> that's never going to be right. It's no matter what I do, it's never going to be right. It's just going to look weird. Alright. Same line. Alright. Now I'm going to edit, free transform. And then I'm going to turn it. Or you can hit Control T if you're on a Windows computer, and if you're on a Mac, uh, so I don't know what to do for you. <laughs> I think it's Control T on a Mac as well, but I think it's Command T on on a Mac. Uh, I don't use Mac, as you can clearly tell. I don't. But all right, here we go. So it's diagonal now. Bam. Then you're gonna go back to Edit. You're gonna go back to Free Transform or Control T. I like to do it the long way because I have uh, mental issues, I guess. All right. So and then we're gonna turn it. To the side that we need it all right there we go and then hit that transform button or you can uh, I forgot what transform is it, anyway so then try warping it to the shape you can use these little points on the sides to move it the way you want to it's gonna take a while to get this right but after a while you start to really start to feel it you know exactly which where you need to click on them to, to get the line to be kind of even all the way around in thickness it doesn't have to be even all the way around you can do it where it it, it kind of even it, it thins out or whatever it depends on like what kind of look you're looking for but boom I'm gonna leave that alone all right and there you go there you have your line it's a straight line and you can do this without having a tablet. This is one of the reasons why I, I, I picked this up because there was a time where I didn't have a tablet at all. Uh, my tablet was, I think it was dead or something and I still had to draw. Like I, there's no, there was no stopping my art. I had to do something and then I, I figured this out. Uh, so if you have a mouse, actually, if you have a mouse and you have Photoshop right now, If you have a mouse and you have Photoshop CS CS3, I think you can actually get CS3 pretty pretty quick, like cheap or free. <laughs> I mean, if you know where to look. If you look for Photoshop CS3 portable, the portable version of it, that's not chock full of viruses. Uh, you can actually use it right now, like literally as I am sitting here talking to you, you can do it. And if you have a sketch or something that you wanna you wanna try and color right now, you could actually try it. So that's you don't have to have a tablet to draw draw really really smooth lines. You can vector it just 
this way. It's really, really, really easy. So, as a matter of fact, I, I'll prove that point to you. I'm gonna do it with a mouse. All right, I have my mouse right here. My tablet, my pen is down, all right? I'm gonna draw this line right here. This one's already diagonal, so there's no point in having to go and transform it. So I can just go straight to edit, retransform, and then warp. Or I can hit that button right there if it's available. If it's not, then you have to do that a long way. All right, now I'm clicking using my mouse and not using the tablet at pen at all. Uh, using the pen. This is all by mouse, all right? I think that's smooth enough. Here we go. It's, it's, uh, I tell you, Photoshop CS3 Portable is the exact same Photoshop. I've used it for a long time, and that was maybe about five, six years ago. All right. So I'm telling you, if it was free five to six years ago for the portable version, it's free right now. <laughs> Unless somebody picked it up and was like, oh, shit, why is this free? Pay for it. All right, so I would say Google it, see if you can find it. Make sure you look for one that's not full of uh, full of viruses, and if it is, uh, make sure you get it tested first to see what kind of viruses you got. Um, <laughs> All right, so this is with a mouse. I'm actually using the mouse still. I'm still using the mouse. I just want to let you know that it is really possible you can do this stuff without having to have a tablet or expensive thing or having to pay a dime for any sort of software at all because I'm telling you, this Photoshop, it's the same Photoshop. All right, so I'm going to go to duplicate this layer, and the reason I'm doing that is because there's two colors here on this face. All right, so I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to go for the darker color, which is the gray. Right there. I'm going to click on this little section right here. I don't know if you can see that in there. Can you? Okay, cool. If you can see it, good. Click on that section right there, and then you get the color. You automatically get this nice little eyedropper tool, which is good, because you can just select the colors from wherever you need to select them from. If you have your reference somewhere, which I do, just click on that. If you have Photoshop CS3, you can actually pop open your reference in the same exact window, and then you can drag it off to either another window or another monitor if you have another monitor, but you can actually have both windows in the same screen. And then when you want to select your colors, just click on there, click the eyedropper tool, it'll pop up automatically, obviously, and then you click on the colors that you want out of whatever drawing. But the interesting thing is, you can actually drag this eyedropper tool out of Photoshop altogether and into whatever you have open. Like, I just dragged it right into the chat and I'm, I'm eyedropping over the images that you guys posted for your thumbnails and all these colors right here I can pick from, which is interesting, yeah? So you can, as long as you, as long as you're still pressed down on it, on the, I think, what is it, left click, you can select colors from anywhere on your screen. And that's the same in the Photoshop portable version as well, so. So I'm going to drag it right over here. And now I have the black that I need for this, for, not for this part, okay, obviously not for that, but it's going to be for just where the eye section is, right? Hey, there we go. So what I did there was I just erased away the, the, the layer that's right on top. So this is the layer, that I duplicated it and I changed the color and now I'm erasing off the section that I changed the color of, okay? So now all that's left is just this section right here where the eye is. And then at the top here is going to be this section where this pattern right here meets the top of his head. When you do this, you always want to go back. See that part right there? The one that's still blue? You want to go back and erase that because it, you can't tell right here, but when you get to the when you get to the fill part, you're going to be able to see this. I mean, I'm going to take away the background seat. Well, no, that's not going to help. <laughs> but I'm going to zoom in. You see that blue that's forming around the black? That is actually the background layer. So for some reason, the pixels kind of like bleed over behind layers in Photoshop. 
I don't know if they fixed that problem. If they have, good for them. But if they haven't, in CS3, it definitely does. So, see this background? You can still see it. All right. So you want to click on, take the eraser tool, click on that, and then you want to click once. And it's going to ask you on, it's going to ask you this right here. Tell you that it's a vector layer and that would you like to rasterize it before proceeding? If you click cancel, uh, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. But if you hit OK, now it's a rasterize and you're good. Now you can do whatever you want with that layer, including erase it. Now watch as the blue disappears from behind us. I don't know if you saw that, but the, the blue is now gone. All right. So now if you look at this, see, now it's missing because you erased it. You erased it from behind there. And now it's completely black. There's no blue somewhere on it. That's going to mess with what, when you're coloring or anything like that, when you're filling it in. And then for this one, you take your eraser tool and just erase it. So now you have the blue right here to, for the ear that overlaps this. So you want to make sure. You want to make sure. You want to make doubly sure that this layer is on top. If it's not on top, just look right over here on your uh, right hand side and you'll see the layers. Just click on the one that you want to move up and then move it on top of the layer that's supposed to be behind it. It makes, makes logical sense. Like if this black part right here is behind the blue part, like his ear is behind this part of his head or in front of this part of his head, then his ear should be in front. So if this layer right here is his ear layer, just move it up. You don't have to name it or anything. I mean, eventually I'm going to merge all these layers down anyway. So it's pointless to uh, name stuff or I'm not pointless, big giant waste of time for that matter. Hey, looky, someone's actually going to try it. Good stuff. I like that, man. I like that. You've done well, my friend. Let me know when you've installed it. I will like to tutorial you even further. I want to see you do something with your art, too. All right. So I'm, I'm, I really do feel like this will help people who have a lot of issues with, like, drawing straight lines and, and shading in straight lines, especially people that don't have tablets and try to do it with a mouse. Uh... I think it's just, it's it's the best thing. It's the best thing it, since, uh, uh, whatever I was trying to reference. <laughs> Here we go. So this would be a good example of like, like tapering off the line. All right, you see the line's a little thicker up here and then it gets a little thin down at the bottom. So not all the lines have to be like the same thickness. You don't have to fight with it and try to figure out how to make all the lines the same thickness, really. In all honesty, you don't have to do that. I'm going a little faster now because uh, I want to get some part of this done, too. Shit, this is progress. Anybody else gonna try and use uh, Photoshop? Anyone? Anyone interested in trying this method? I mean, it is, it's freaking awesome, dude. It's like, it's addictive. It's addictive, especially when you're making progress, like you're getting, you're getting somewhere with it. Oh, it's so good. Like uh, my previous streams, I would like to say that it's, it's not really that important that you shade in all of your stuff right away. I would say that. If you want to make an interesting live stream, you can actually do it by starting to shade, shade in parts of the drawing so that it starts to look, you know, it starts to have color, if you know what I'm saying. But in actuality, you don't really need to do that. You don't really have to have, I mean, you don't really have to shade in all the stuff right away. For this stream, I will actually be shading in some parts of it right away because of course it's a live stream and it's the first one that I've done here on YouTube since I can't remember the last time I did one so uh, <laughs> so I will be doing that I don't think I've ever done a art live stream before reference to like drawing stuff or a tutorial on stuff you know I don't think I remember doing that but correct me I don't know I don't think I don't even know if I did an art tutorial on um, Picardo, but as much as I'd like to do an art 
tutorial on Picardo, I feel like it doesn't it doesn't save all your stuff, right? You have to have like a premium membership before you can save your recordings. I don't want to. I don't want it to be something where people can't come back to it and look at it and say, oh, that's how you do that. Or they can pause and rewind and see how to do it again. Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be doing that here, trying to figure out how this will. All right. Anyway, let me go ahead and repeat it again. So right here, this is a good example. You're working underneath the ear layer. All right. See that? See, I just drew that line in, but that's behind it. So that means that you, all these layers behind here are behind that ear layer, which is good. You want to be working behind the layers that you're working. If you have this layer in front of it, you want to be working behind it. This line right here is already diagonal already. If you already get a diagonal line, that's just easy. That just makes it a lot faster for you. So you just go ahead and go to right here, edit free transform and to warp. Or you can just go up to that tab at the very top right there where it says warp and then click on that if it's already available it should be um, if it's not you have to hit control T you have to hit control uh, control T or you have to go to edit free transform so not edit free transform and warp but just edit and then hit free transform and then you'll see this pop up right here at the top and then that means that you can actually just go right here and then go to warp if you're not in warp is back to just transform Oh, I mean free transform, sorry. There we go. And there we go. There's another line. <laughs> well, that's it. It's like the tedious thing. That's, that's the only tedious thing there is to just sit down and continue doing this over and over again. But the end result is pretty good. And I'll tell you why. Actually, you know what? Before I do any of that, uh, there is a step that I did not mention because this this drawing was already done. I would have mentioned it uh, if I was drawing this this uh, sketch today, but I'll bring it up because it is very important for you if you're going to try this today and you have a drawing that's extremely small. For the love of goats, all right? Do not, <laughs> do not, <laughs> goats. Guys, <laughs> freaking rare. Do not draw on a small canvas okay do not do that all right make sure when you when you uh, make your file if it's not already there go here cancel that just save all right go here go to image size so okay i don't know if you can see the stuff go to file okay at the top you're gonna see it if you have photoshop cs3 if you have any photoshop really you're gonna see this thing and then go to image and then go to image size not canvas size i'm going to go to canvas okay and i think scale styles consist uh whatever constraint or whatever ah! uh something about resampling images just make sure all this stuff at the bottom is selected okay because if you don't have that stuff selected you're going to be doing some weird stuff or you're going to be doing a lot of extra editing that you don't really need to do this one is at 72 uh psi which it, 70 72 pixels per inch okay this one's at 72 which is it's not great but it's good for the internet I guess but okay for size I have mine set to 330 uh, 33,000 whatever or 3,300 Jesus and then uh, 2550 for the height I don't know. I just feel like it, 3300 is the number that I use, and it has been a number that I've used for some time. I don't know if you looked at my stuff. I know 4000 is the maximum on some websites now. It's just, I've used that for maybe something in the past a long time ago, but this size right here seems to work good. Really, ideally, you want to have a resolution uh, maybe about 100 to 300, somewhere in that range pixels per inch and the reason why you want to have that is because when you go to fill in this stuff a low resolution is going to do something really terrible for your artwork let me see if i can give you a good example i can make a new one file new all right uh yeah us paper is good boom all right let's do let's go ahead and make this image size the average one two eight zero. Uh uh. I don't even want that. One two eight zero. 
All right, I think this is the, the typical crappy size that people draw their crap in. Uh, let's go ahead and image size. Change that resolution to 72. Ooh, you gotta love them apples. That is some horrible resolution. I'm gonna erase that to maybe like 500. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, now I'm gonna change the PX because that's, that brush is gonna be ridiculously huge to about two pixels for the size of the line tool that I'm drawing. Ooh, that's too small. That is too big. <laughs> Right, let's draw a square. I'm not gonna do too much here. I'm gonna add a curve because you have to add curves to these. <clears throat> let's see if I get a nice curve going. Yeah, that's good. I don't even know what that is. It looks like a battery. Doesn't matter. Right, there we go. Edit, step back. Uh, I'm gonna add in a squiggly line, which I'm gonna make myself because the squiggly line needs to be squiggly. All right, there we go. Nice squiggly line in there. I'm gonna make one part of that squiggly line really, really thin. All right, there we go. I got a couple lines in there. We're gonna merge all those lines together. Merge layers. Bam. Let me show you something. Uh. Okay, first off, you can see right off the bat that uh, the lines don't look as good as they did on this. Okay, look at that. I'm not even... You look at these lines, okay? I'm zooming in on these lines, first off. And look how those look. And then look at this one. Like, and it, it, even at this distance, they're like extremely pixelated already, which is ridiculous. Uh, you don't want that, but that's not the only problem that they produce. Let's grab that, and then I'm going to duplicate this layer again because we're going to draw the back of this layer. Yep. Oh, I don't see it in there. Hmm. Let's add in the yellow. Well, actually not yellow, I will use the black. I want the darkest color possible because you can see it better with that. There we go. All right, so you start getting these stupid formations right here. This is what you're gonna start getting. I don't know if you see that. Now, in order to fix these issues that you face right here, these ones, in Photoshop, it's actually quite interesting. This is the reason why you see me when I'm using the paintbrush tool and I've actually done all the lines, already done, everything's done. You would see me like just taking the paintbrush tool, I mean the paint, the paint bucket tool, and then just hitting the same spot more than one time. And that's why I was like, uh, that needs two hits or three hits. If you do it too many times, you're gonna go over, but it actually causes it to bleed over. So it deletes some pixels as it goes along and it expands. So. If I click again, like I take that same bucket tool and then I click on it again. Did you saw that? So it just refilled the same spot again, but look, it ate up a couple pixels. This is the reason why you don't want to work in a low resolution. See that? It almost went over to the other side with that second click. Just two clicks. I could probably click this maybe like 10 times before it does this on a higher resolution. But that was just two clicks right there and the tolerance changes that too so if i raise the tolerance to the default which is 35 okay for the paint bucket tool and i just change that at the top see right here where we were before where the transform tool is now you can see the tolerance for the paint bucket okay so go back boom now i'm gonna actually you know what? i'm gonna step back twice all right now i'm gonna click it one time you know, see, it filled it a little better because the tolerance level is a little higher, but it's still really bad. Look at that. Still bad. All right, now I'm going to click it a second time. <laughs> okay, so look what happened. It ate up all the black layer of the, of the layer. And this, this can't be fixed right here by just putting... That's why it's like too many clicks. So... You can't be fixed by putting a, a inked layer right over the top of it. 
you try that and you can still see it bleeding right over behind it and it bleeds over into the blue section of it see now in a higher resolution you won't have this issue your tolerance level can be really high but at the same time you can click it like a thousand times and you'll be fine well not a thousand I mean that's been dramatically higher than you need to but like a uh, tolerance level of five for example you'd be good on this you can click it one time and look it's smooth it's good and then of course the blue same thing one time you're good if you look behind it you can see it's starting to mesh a little bit see this would not see how you almost completely lost that line now it's almost gone completely <laughs> Gosh. all right see that's what happens that's what happens right there if you uh, if you use a low resolution and not to mention these lines don't look so good like why would you go through all this effort of vectoring all these lines and then rasterizing all of them just to result in lines that look this not so good you know what I mean pixelate unless you want it pixel art you know what I mean? All right, well, that's my tutorial on that section. I'm going to close that. I don't really want it. <laughs> I deleted it. <laughs> what? Mr. Wilson! Do you have something against pokies? These Pokemon right here didn't do anything to you. They're just busy being Pokemon and doing their Pokemon stuff. <laughs> you know it's funny I actually kind of find myself sometimes using a mouse out of nowhere like I wouldn't I would catch myself I'd be just like drawing drawing on my tablet and everything whatnot and then I'd do something where I need the mouse and the next thing you know I come back and I'm I'm inking I'm actually inking the lines or vectoring the lines with the mouse it's weird but that goes to show that that this method is so good that you can do that. I'm sorry, uh, I really, really, really wanted to advertise this live stream on Fur Affinity, but I feel like Fur Affinity's done something weird. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. What, what happened with Fur Affinity? It used to be like one of those places where you can just draw whatever. Like it had freedom, you know what I mean? And not only that, but the personality of the people that were also there were a little bit better. And it feels like Wild Critters died off. Wild Critters is just like, it's gone now. And 4chan is probably something else now. It doesn't even, I don't think it's non-existent. I just feel like it, it's, it's mutated into something completely different. So everybody's decided that, hey, you know what? Instead of being on those places, let's go to Wild, oh, for Affinity. Yeah, let's do that. Let's hang out over there. I feel like that's what happened. Because, of course, those guys on, on DA don't play around with that type of, you know, the stuff that they do there, for example. Uh, a little bit of that troll activity. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong. I haven't been on DA long enough to know how the community is over there because it's so fast-paced. you were okay I'm just reading by reading what you're saying are you are you no longer insulted by it now is it has that changed over time is it do you now feel better inside do you have that warm fuzzy feeling in the morning after seeing my stuff now or has it changed over time I, I don't know are you saying were you offended by my stuff of the past or are you now offended like were you offended of the stuff that I now draw but no longer feel offended?
<laughs> I'm sorry, I, I laugh a lot. I don't know. Is that a good thing? I feel like it's a bad thing. No one wants crow's feet. <laughs> Oh, are you talking about wild critters or are you talking about uh, for affinity? You're going to have to be a little bit more clear on it because my art on wild critters was um, not great. Okay, I will admit that one myself. I, I was starting up and I can tell you right now that the, the art I posted there was not acceptable. Um... I was trying to push a, a concept that was never going to be popular. I didn't know that, of course. Um, <laughs> really? This is interesting because I rarely, well, I mean, I would not be able to consider what I drew on Wild Critters to be painterly at all. I was uh, another word that starts with P, but not uh, painterly. I would say maybe poor quality. Uh, <laughs> I would say at the very end of my time on Wild Critters, I just, just, just started doing stuff that I would consider to be okay. Of course, at that time, my reputation was tarnished enough that there was no point in actually uh, posting any of that there. <laughs> it was already too late. Kind of screwed up. Screwed myself up a little bit. But hey, that experience is what got me to where I am at. So, I mean, if I didn't go over there and make the mistakes that I made, I would not learn from those mistakes. In case you guys are wondering what Wild Critters is, it's like it's like Fur Affinity. And in case you're wondering what Fur Affinity is, it's like a DA, but there's more, more crazy stuff on it. And then, <clears throat> I guess I could go from there and say that it's, if you don't know what DA is, then you need to Google it. Hey, did anyone get Photoshop? Or does anyone have Photoshop? The question, two questions. Anyone? And if you do have Photoshop, would you like to try this method? Is it something that you want to try? I know there was someone a really, really long time ago that I uh, I showed this to and, and they tried it and they used it for a while and then they disappeared. I don't know what happened to that guy. But um, it looks like he was starting to get it. I guess I could say that. He looked, he looked like he was starting to get it, starting to, starting to understand it, and it was starting to work out for him. And I think he was one of the people that did not have a tablet, so he had to like scan in his stuff. But when he scanned it in, I mean, at that point, it was pretty much just follow the, the steps at that point. And I, I think he did like something. He did some art with it. <laughs> Wait, you said no it's not. It it, it is not it was, you mean it was because Wild Critters is no longer existent. Unless you you know a secret passageway to get into it. I wanna know it. <laughs> you know the back door? My friend here has the back door to the Wild Critters, the original too. Ooh, I need something to drink. Something good. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. 
My website also went down. It was sad. I sold my website off to someone and they said they were going to make something great of it and then they destroyed it. And that was sad. But the thing is, when I had a website, I didn't really know what to do with it. I thought it was like a safe storage spot for all art that you can possibly think of. But then at the same time, I really, really didn't think that I could do anything with that website. But you know what's funny? When you have it, you don't really know what to do with it. And then when you lose it, you really want it back. You're like, God dang it, I really like that. You never know what you had to you it's gone but I mean it is what it is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fuss too much because I kind of do remember how it felt to have that website and how tedious it was to go on there and moderate and modify and try to get everything working properly if you guys remember Coppermine Gallery Coppermine Gallery was what uh, A-G-N-P-H I don't know how you spell that uh, or pronounce it but what they were using to run their website for a while before they switched over to whatever they're using now. And uh, we were running that and a couple other modifications to get our website up. Uh, that program is, is weird. It's buggy as hell. The version that we had was extremely buggy. It was okay for a gallery, but I just feel like it, it needed more work. That's probably where I lost interest. Well, I gotta tell you that if you ever have a website, eh, don't sell it off. I would say just just hang on to the domain at least. You know what I mean? What the hell? What happened here? That line is like it's way off. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. I, I think you may have run into it by mistake. <laughs> you might have been Googling some Pokemon and then you was like, what is this? This is a different website. It's cool. Is that website still around? I, I don't know. I feel like um, I remember um, Hatchling about a heart, which is the, it's the, it's the guy that was actually running my website for a while he was running my website for a while he went to he went to there and he moderated there for a good deal of time what the f what you might not know him but if you look on his page on uh, ink bunny or fur affinity you might still see it that he says he's a moderator there and I think I saw him on, on that website uh, doing some work. <laughs> well, that's probably it. I think that's how most people find stuff. Just Google it. Um, for those people who are just joining in, which is probably not very many, um, <laughs> the music has been modified ever so slightly. There's a glitch that has been added to it because of YouTube, so it might sound a little weird on your end. So don't think it's your network connection or something acting goofy, but my voice, however, will be very smooth and you'll enjoy it. I'm just kidding, you don't have to. <laughs> I don't think I can you guys actually hear the music or is it so low that you can barely hear it? I, I can't really tell right now. I can't really sample the live stream. Or can I? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I can. Maybe I can uh maybe I can play it back to my headphones. Yeah. I have, I have no idea what you're talking about, but if you, you could link that. I'd like to see whatever this first, uh, uh, whatever you call that is. <laughs> yeah, YouTube friendly. Give us it. Let's see it. 
I'm pretty sure my, my stream is already jacked up enough that I don't have to uh, worry about not being uh, uh, cited for weird ass activity on YouTube. <laughs> pretty sure it's already jacked up enough. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe it's not jacked up enough, and it needs to be jacked up even further. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I wasn't actually talking about my voice, more or less the the music in the background of my voice. Can you hear the music? Wee, thank you, buddy. I like that. I like that. That makes me feel good inside all around. <laughs> I like it because usually, like, I would live stream for like an hour or two, and then after like an hour or two, they'd be like, Hey, uh, your music has been loud for like maybe two or three hours. Like, what? <laughs> I couldn't hear your voice the whole time. What? <laughs> What's going on? And we always see him like, why didn't you tell me? My voice was messed up the whole time. Jeez. Could have. My game was fighting with you. Do it. But yeah, that's one of the reasons why I actually draw... One of the things I was planning on doing, I don't know if you meant, recall me mentioning it like maybe about uh, a year ago, but I was like, I'm going to try to start doing some more YouTube videos and I'm going to try to figure out a way that I can actually do art tutorials on YouTube and actually live stream some art on YouTube directly and I was like well there has to be a way that I can do that so that the art does not violate any uh, sort of uh, rules that YouTube might have in place and that's the idea for drawing the the alternate versions of these drawings, which is what I also use for DeviantArt, by the way. If you have looked at my DeviantArt page, you can kind of see it. Jesus. Okay, I am modifying the tracks, but some of the tracks are sounding really, really bad on the, the mod that I added. <laughs> so, I have to... I have to, I have to skip the, the ones that turn out really bad. <clears throat> For those guys who do actually enjoy hearing the music that I play uh, on my live streams, be mindful that the, the actual artwork that you see here will be continued on Picardo in its full state. Okay, so whenever I'm done on YouTube, of course, I will switch over there and continue the live stream and you'll get to see everything that is this artwork. The way art was meant to be shown. <laughs> hey, Deltad, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. <laughs> Suggestive of what? Playing around? It's just wrestling. I have no idea what that is. I'm sorry, I have never heard of it before. But if you would like to, uh, um, I don't know, tell me what it's about, I would like to hear about it. It sounds like an interesting concept. Hey, guess what, guys? All that fantastic work that we've been working on, and it's been some work. We've been working a long time, sitting down here and watching. It equates to some part of his head. <laughs> Oh my, I had to laugh at that one. Like, what in that? Doesn't it feel like there was a lot more done in that time that we were sitting here? It was like, that's it. It's just a head. Hence on why the stuff that I draw takes a lifetime. Because even though this method works really good and you get some really smooth lines, uh, it takes many, many hours to get one thing to look complete.
Uh, that might be a little too thick. Let's make it a little, just a, just a pitch thinner. Yep, that'll do it right there for Lucario's uh, eyes. At least the outline of his eyes will do. Well, let me read uh, some of the many thousands of things that you guys have been saying since I've been looking at it. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't seen it. Mm -mm. My name on Picardo is the same. It was uh, Trickster Zard. So if you... Uh, if you take my, if you take Trickster and you put Z Zard next behind it, like uh, Charizard, Z, -Z A R D, uh, you get the name. Congratulations! You now turn twenty-two. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, buddy. I think when I turned 22, I was sitting down here doing art. I wonder what would happen if I was, if, if when I was 22, I was doing art, but I was streaming it on YouTube. I'm curious. I'm curious. If I figured out this method, like, that long ago, and it's not really that long ago, but still, <laughs> a while ago, that's, uh, was like six years ago? I don't know. I, I'm bad at math. I'm a little bad at math. But whatever. If I was if I was doing it then, I wonder what it would look like. Hmm. I'd probably be having a conference with uh, Casey by now or something. <laughs> God, with the with the top guys, we like. I know we do some interesting YouTube content, but your content is just different. Like, yeah, of course it is. It's uh, just a little bit of furry. It's just got a little furriness to it, that's all. You like that? I don't even know what Pokemon that is. Is it like a new Pokemon or what? You might have to link these things, buddy. I don't know. I'm as lost as most people in the stream. It, or, or maybe not. Maybe I'm just the only one that doesn't know many Pokemon. Like, if you look at my stuff, you can see that I kind of stick with like a very specific group of Pokemon. I haven't really ventured out into the wild tall grass yet but I mean Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're ta I think. I think I know what you're talking about doesn't mean I know what you're talking about, though. <laughs> Fine, I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to Google it. Okay, here, look, I'm Googling it now. I'm Googling it. Enjoy, all right? Here I go. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to actually take the opportunity that I have right now to Google the Pokemon. I'm just kidding, Pokemon. <laughs> You guys remember that next stuff from- Oh yeah! That Pokemon is cute. Look at the face. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I just meant I want to see the Pokemon. I don't want to see that. Gimme. Hmm, this is a nice Pokemon. I don't think there's many art, much art of that Pokemon drawn. However, I feel like it has the potential for some interesting stuff. Yeah, I haven't drawn. I haven't drawn that one. 
If I did draw it, I do not remember drawing it, but yeah, I haven't drawn that one. That Pokemon right there actually looks very, very, very close to Digimon. I would say it looks more like a Digimon than most Pokemon do. Look like Pokemon, for that matter. That's very, very Digimon looking Pokemon. That's saying something, isn't it? But it really, that looks like a Digimon. And that's not to say the Digimon have a specific look or anything, but it just looks like a Digimon. Okay, back to the, the stream. Okay, here we go. Yay. <laughs> Moles. Boulders. Oh. There we go. All right, cool. Yeah, I haven't drawn that one yet. Uh, as far as I think I recall, if I did draw it for any reason. I probably did not draw it well because it must have been a long time ago. But I feel like it'd be an interesting concept to draw like a Digimon that it looks like right next to that, like or with that character for that matter. You know what I mean? I do a pick with uh, what's what looks like that? It looks like a Terriermon seal. I mean, if you add a little green to it, it probably looked like a Terriermon. <laughs> uh. But it also looks kind of like, um, what's that other one? Patamon? P-A-T? It's sort of a P-A-T. It looks kind of like a Patamon too. Maybe. I don't know, I forget which one it looks like. Whatever it is. Uh, why can't I remember Digimon's names and Pokemon? I can't freaking remember a lot of their names. It's weird. It's just the oddest thing ever. Oh yeah, I did say I was gonna go and uh, I was gonna go and fix. I was gonna do the face first, so I'm gonna go back to the face. Sorry, sorry that I kind of jumped around the drawing a little bit there, but I'm actually gonna go back to the face again. Let me see if I can get that Lucario. Oh, thanks, buddy. I'm glad that you like it. Now, if you'd like to learn how to make some of it yourself, please stay in my stream for a very, very long time. I need as many views as possible. <laughs> uh, actually, really, I'm not gonna hold you. Do what you gotta do, bud. All right, let's do three pixels per inch right there. Zoom in. Oh. Oh, oh, yes! All right, so, uh, here's an interesting thing that you guys probably already know how to do in many, many, many different programs, but I'm gonna show you how I do it in Photoshop. Uh, I skipped a step there, and you know what? I'm too lazy to go back because I took all that effort in my, my the, the en and energy, all that effort and energy in my thumbs to click all this stuff on my mouse, so I'm not gonna go back. However, I'm gonna do it on the other side. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. All right. Yeah, come on. Gimme. That sounds getting crazy. All right. Oh, you know what? I'm so lazy. I can't actually do it. Okay, I'm gonna show you it. I'm gonna show you in another part. Um, I'll describe it. I'll describe what I did. And the reason why I'm, I'm not doing it is because you can easily replicate this whole thing from one side of the face to the other. So uh, we're not doing that over again because we're lazy, of course. 
let's just duplicate that and free transform it ever so slightly so that it fixes on the other side and then we're just right moving on from here. <laughs> His eyes not gonna be that redonkulously big. Did I pause or did I s Yeah, I paused. You know what's funny? Um, there's three things that I wanted to do that you guys never got to see, but you guys probably would have enjoyed it greatly if I did it. Um, but it's not going to happen now because I've changed my mind on that project. But um, the Spyro drawing that you saw earlier, that one, was supposed to be a comic. Um, the Spike versus Spike, if you remember that, that was also supposed to be continued to another page which was kind of funny but then it had a little dark side to it so I didn't really want to continue doing that either and um, let's see what else was supposed to be continued that comic that you saw last was just his utopia one with the little bunny uh, that one right there was supposed to be continued uh, I don't know if you saw the last stream that I did on here before I had to go dormant for a little bit because a uh, school and other stuff popped up but that one was uh, actually a continuation of of uh, the comic. The Judy part of it was just another thing that I wanted to draw, but if you go into the Photoshop file, which I don't think you guys have, you might have it. I mean, if you're on Patreon, maybe you have it. If you go inside there, you'll see the, the continuation that was supposed to happen. It never happened, though. <laughs> It's, it's hard. It's really hard for me to get some stuff done. That's one of the reasons why people poke me about commissions or ask for commissions and stuff. And I accept them. Which is very extremely rare, by the way. Just letting you know. Um, it, 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 it sets me back a ton. So this time I did. I did do one, one art for someone. And I am so far behind right now. It is like, I can't even describe it. Anyway... The Stitch vs. Toothless comic, that page, I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do for the, the next um, the next stream that I'm going to do on YouTube, um, I'm actually going to crop out a section of that drawing that does not really require a lot of editing in order to be live streamed on YouTube, and I'm going to focus squarely on coloring that section of the drawing, because it's like little, the little paintings within paintings, okay, it's like you're doing... I don't know, it's really hard to describe, but it's like you're doing a whole lot of uh, uh, painterly style drawings all at once. Kind of the way that, that whole comic concept works. So in order to brought, like stream at least a part of it here, I would actually have to I'd actually have to crop one section. Not crop it, but like you know, like I don't know how to describe it. Okay, it's hard to describe, but it'll be easier to show you when I actually do it. <laughs> Merge down, buddy. Merge it. Alright. So, I was not able to show you what I wanted to show you on there, which was how to draw hollowed out circles in Photoshop like that. You can make them using that same method as previous. However, the easier method would be to um, go to your circle tool. So notice how this was the line tool for the entire time when I was working on a line, which is a line tool. See, this is the line. Now we're going to go same spot and we're going to, let me see if you can see that. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, we're going to go right here and then we're going to select the circle or ellipse tool. I don't know why they would call it ellipse. Of course, the ellipse is an important tool for a lot of the circular objects in the drawing. So stuff like this right here and stuff like that right there, this will help greatly in, in kind of like getting that done quickly. Select the color that you want that to be. Draw a simple circle. So hit shift and draw a circle to just about the size of the object that you want the circle to be. Okay? I want it to be the spike. So I'm going to draw 
the circle to just about the size of the spike. That spike's a little big, but I'll make it smaller in the uh, after this. Double click on the layer, and then you're gonna go look through here, and you're gonna find inside there. Oh, I don't know if you you can't see it. You can't see the you can't see this tool. Let me see if I can let me see if I can post the layer styles as a separate part so that you can see it pop up in the stream when I actually use it. So I'm gonna go here. I'm going to add a window capture. I'm going to add a window capture and we're going to find layer styles. Boom. All right. So this is going to pop up right here. Every single time I work on layer styles. Okay. And it's up there now, but when I'm done with it, like, since I'm done, uh, anyway, so you're going to go to layer styles, you're going to go to stroke right here, and you're going to click on that, and then you're going to find the color you're looking for using the, the dropper tool. So you, if it's in here, you can select it, but if it's not in here and you have another reference open, you can just click on that color. Now this is the color that the, the line is going to be for this object. And then, right here in the corner, you're going to decide what size it should be. I would say make it as as close as possible to the lines you already have. So maybe like four pixels per inch and then leave it alone. Uh, you know what? I'll make it three. I'll make it three because it's a big, big object. Nah, four. All right, cool. Now we have, now we have uh, an object here. Go to edit. Retransform. And then actually, you know what? Let me see if I can get the edit tab to, to save in there as well. Because that'd be interesting. If it does, if it doesn't, this phone over here. Add window capture. And let's see if I can get edit in there. Darn it. Okay, well, let me go back to Photoshop and see if I can get edit open file. Edit. Nah, cancel. I can't get that. I'll hide it for now. All right, but um, I'll just describe it. It's not too hard to go up there, but you go to edit. That is too thick. I looked at it like three times just now. It's like the line is too fat. Three is good. All right, um, so I go to edit, free transform, and then go to warp. Or you can go to, uh, you can go to control, and then you can go to T. And then control T will give you transform, and then you can click on that little button at the top there to edit free transform. You can warp it to the shape of the object right away if you're really, really skilled at it. You can do that. This is if you want to. This is this is a choice that you can make if you want to do it. How I'm going to draw it in the method that most people will use if they were going to do this, which would be edit, free transform, warp, and then you see you can see all the points that you need to move in order to get this to look like a triangle. Okay. <clears throat> so this corner one right here, click on that and move it over. And in this corner right here, we're going to move that one over a little bit. I would say about to the same point is good. And then you have this nice little soft angle. Then you go down here and you're going to push on the sides a little bit. Then you go to, go to this one right here and you're going to push on the sides a little bit there as well. And then you have something of a, like, just like a little rounded, you know, uh, candy corn. Let's call it that. Then you're going to go to just uh, free transform. So go back to free transform. Scale it to the size that you need, and then you're gonna deselect the whole thing. If you want to make it a little bit sharper, you can go edit back, transform, warp, and then you can go in and you can just adjust these lines ever so slightly to make it sharper if you need to. I don't really need to, but I'm just gonna make it a tiny bit sharper for this. I don't want it to look too round and dull. 
And here we go. You have yourself a chest horn. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> okay, I know it's not a chest horn, okay? It just it looks like it's a horn just sticking out of the chest for some odd reason. Okay, there we go. Oh, no music for you, buddy? Oh. I'm gonna show you it again. You're missing out because that's a really good track too. All right, look at that. I'm drawing one big circle. There we go. The circle is drawn. This is for his little arm uh, uh, floaties. Let's call them floaties because that's what they are. Okay, he's blue dog with black floaties on his arms. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry if you guys are offended by that description of Lucari. <laughs> oh, she's not a blue dog with floaties. That's just what it looks like. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, so we're going to. Uh, We're gonna make that black as well, and then we're gonna increase that stroke size by about three, which is just the thickness of the what? Give me that three. Make it a black. Well, it's not black. This line is like it's really dark gray, and the reason why we're doing that is one, um, because this is black. That section's supposed to be supposed to be black, and we're just trying to split everything up so we can get the colors in there. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do right now because I want to show you how I do the colors with the uh, with the paint bucket tool and then just without the paint bucket tool, which is something you guys probably already know how to do both of. However, I think with this style, it's just ever so slightly different, just a little bit. Okay, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Okay, and then after that, I'll leave you guys alone. Okay, I won't bother you anymore. You can go back to whatever things you were doing. You can enjoy your nut. I mean, <laughs> you can enjoy your nut. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you like, enjoy your nut, sir. <laughs> oh thanks buddy I, I actually really never thought that my expressions were good enough to be comment like uh, commended or anything like that that's actually really nice of you thank you buddy I, I feel like I just do like average expressions but I guess you guys see more than I do what do you think Mr. Deltad by the way, I stumbled upon that drawing that I, was, I did, I was working on. I still haven't finished it. It's just the weirdest thing how I have never finished that drawing. I, I see it all the time. I'm like, geez, how do I not finish coloring this thing? One of these days, buddy, it's gonna happen. One of these days I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna be like, darn it, Deltad. This drawing right here is something that I definitely need to finish and I'm gonna do it. Just gonna do it and it's gonna happen. People are gonna have to live with that. By the way, Delta, do you do you hear music? Because uh, some people do not hear music. Uh, it's just the weirdest thing. Uh, it's like in 1996.
Did I post this on Facebook? I think I did. Let me eyeball my Facebook account for a second to see if I've actually done it. Or not. I don't know if I did. Let's eyeball now! Or not. I just stand here and not do it. As you may already have been able to tell, I find ways to distract myself continuously. There's no end to the distractions that I produce for myself because I just I just do it. I do it. It's one of the reasons why I rarely ever get anything done is because I get distracted very easily and you're gonna see that a lot in my stuff. I just I get really distracted. And if I get distracted enough I end a stream and I go and distract myself even more. Because that's just life. I need stimulation. Distractions are stimulation. <sighs> okay, but yeah. This is last month's Lucario thing, okay? And it's not like I'm trying to stay on the theme of Lucario or anything, but I have another one for this month that that's not done yet because I haven't got it outside of my head yet. It's still in there, still bouncing around as an idea. Uh, I mean, what do you guys think? Are are you are you into the Lucario theme stuff, or are you trying to? Are you you think I should work on something else? So, I mean, like, what is it? What do you guys think? Let me know. Nobody tells me anything anymore. There's like 10 people here, and it's only like 2 likes on the video. Wait a minute. Come on guys, you can like more. If you like it more, maybe I can just post this straight to wherever else I posted. You know what I mean? That like button, that one at the bottom over there, that means that you like stuff. Actually, I don't think, <laughs> I think it's only like, it's only, yeah, it's only 2 likes on there. I won't explain why I know it's 2 likes, but I'll just tell you it's 2 likes for sure. Or maybe you guys do not like this stuff. Like, whatever. Either way, I'll do it. I always do it. This is, this is just me. <laughs> oh, so you're a game for more sub- What kind of subjects are you- Hold, hold on. Uh, we actually have an interesting point of view here. I don't really know about it. What is it that you want to see? What is your interest? Come on, out with it. I want to know it. I need to know these things for my studies. <laughs> I, I had Hawaiian Punch in here. I don't know where it went. And now my voice is kind of sounding kind of weird because of I lack the high C. Let me get some of that. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, it's all gone, bud. Oh my god, that cup tasted so stale. Why the... Oh, that was not even remotely refreshing. Maybe it was like 0.5 seconds and then it's like... Ugh, bleh. Hey, 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 you think, uh, you think Daniel was, you think Daniel was offended by, uh, the Lucario? I think Daniel was offended. Look at his face. He gave this little smiley. He was like, oh, man, that, that was like, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Daniel, okay? But in the Pokemon world, Pokemon do weird things to each other. <laughs> The Pokemon world. 
I do like Digimon World. Digimon do weird things to each other. Alright, so I did realize when I was working on this that that arm is a little weird, and I will adjust it ever so slightly. I mean, that arm comes down, this one should go up, and then there should be like a little section where it does some something else other than what I've drawn it doing. <laughs> it's like, oh, the, my childhood. Ah! Lucario, how could you? How could you do whatever it is you might be doing in that drawing? <laughs> it's like. It does, it's not what it looks like, buddy. It's not what it looks like. I, like, I could zoom in. Oh, no. <laughs> the YouTube staff just comes over and be like, hmm, is this wrong? I'm like, no, it's not, it's normal. Like, it's what Pokemon do in the anime, I guarantee you. I mean, it's, it's just what they do. <laughs> this music sounds so weird with the mods. It, it, I, I would explain what the mods do to the music, but I'm having trouble even understanding what the mods do to the music myself. But I know it's a frequency adjustment that that, that causes the music to do that because the output and the, the streaming card is completely separate. So it does something weird to the music. So it, it still sounds kind of the way the music is normally supposed to sound, but then it sounds weird and it's also it, it's, it's, it skips within the track so it, I don't know if you noticed that but it's been skipping around a little bit whoa that's so slow Oh, <clears throat> um, I, are you talking about the orb dragons? Is that what you're talking about? That I don't, I don't know if you're talking about the orb dragons. Can you? Is it possible you can link them? I would like to see what you're talking about. I think I, I think I have a clue about what you're talking about, though. Those are gonna be like, they're really, really, really. I don't know. Maybe they need to be revitalized a little bit, yeah. Hey. It's been a long time since I've drawn those guys. I mean, I really didn't draw too many of those dragons either. <sighs> Mr. Deltad says I need to stick to some, some of my uh, OC uh, original character stuff. He says he likes my original characters better. Someone tried to commission Bun Bun. That was nice. I didn't draw him though, but if no one, I wanted to. Dude said he was going to give me money for drawing Bun Bun doing something very specific. And I was like, okay, I'll take the money. 
Actually, I haven't taken any money. I'm just playing. But he did say he wanted art of him, and I have yet to do it because I'm so freaking behind that I can't even draw my own characters as a commission. I think this one's also another one that sounds weird with the with the with the um the mod on because it the spacing that the the mod does to the music seems to align right with the original track like the original uh, rhythm of the song the song and it what it does it it makes it seem like it, it's repeating the same like sound over and over and over again which is not what it's doing at all. I've never heard that track before, but it sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I really don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but yeah, no, I actually, to be honest with you, I have started with that bun bun drawing. I took the time out of my day to draw it, and it's at a state where I would say it's not really presentable at all to even like live stream it. So that's the reason why you are not going to see it for a while. However, uh, like I said, it's a commission and. Some, for some odd mysterious reason I have no ability to do my own commission I mean a commission on on characters that I like designed some parts of or most parts of for that matter that's not a good thing that's bad all right looks like I'm getting to a level where I can actually start adding a little bit of the cut the fill so that's what I'm gonna be doing now in just a minute and then after that, we could call it, or not, I don't know, maybe maybe because it's YouTube, we have to finish the whole thing. If we don't, then people will be like, what? Why wouldn't you finish it? You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe I should finish it for YouTube. Especially since the, the areas that are in question are, are very, very weird looking and should definitely be uh, in color before the end of this so that when people look at that, they're not mistaken in some parts of the areas that are in question for some uh, something that they're not whoa what the heck what was that it sampled all layers when it did that too that was interesting it sampled even the background layer but it sampled everything whoa I don't know what would be fun on YouTube. I feel like, I feel like YouTube is like, remember, um, remember live stream? I don't know if you remember live stream, but YouTube reminds me a little bit of live stream. That's what it reminds me of. It's a tiny bit. Um, or you can do a little bit of something on there, but you gotta be like real careful. Like I was good on live stream for a while. And then live stream was like 
live stream was so horrible about the way they would do things. They would, uh... <laughs> They would end your stream while you were working and you'd be sitting there thinking like, oh, I'm still streaming, I'm still good, I'm great. Yeah, I mean, and everybody would be talking about your stream is dead, like long gone. And you'd still be going for maybe like 30 minutes straight on in before realizing that your live stream has been canceled for forever. Mr. Deltown, are you redacting your uh, statements there, man? I want to know about that. What is that? Give me. Unredact. Hahaha. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. I was stupid. I was like, please don't do it. Don't, 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 don't tell me. <laughs> People would just like dread report that shit. Especially the trolls. The trolls would find their way in and then they would do it. And then I'd just be like, and it's a wrap. And then they, and then I think Livestream had little spies in there. They would just sit around. Wait till the stream got good first. Do I like to wait till when you're having the most fun and then they kill it off? Or, uh, I guess they would sit in the stream and get their rocks off first. You know, Alright, I'm done now. Let's end this stream. <laughs> Oh man, that is just hilarious. You'd have them in there like complimenting your art and everything. Be like, that's some really, really good artwork there. I like it. Gonna have to ban you though. Hey, you know what's good about this live stream? Now I probably can show you like everything that goes into this stuff, even outside of the Photoshop portion of it. Maybe if I'm doing anything inside, but I'm not. Not today, at least. For the most part, it's just going to be Photoshop and actually, my yeah, I'm gonna do the background in Photoshop too, so that way I can show you. Usually, I would just use a I I would use the background from a previous drawing, which from previous drawing that I did and then I uh, I modify it so that it looks unique for this one but for this time I actually might actually go in and redraw most of the background I'll do it the hard way for you guys Right, there we go. That is one. Nope, we're not doing that track. Yeah, 
I'm gonna thin that arm out like a ton. No, I'm not. <clears throat> well, no, it's Picardo. We use Picardo. We use all those. That's not. That's not the reason why. Stop sampling everything. Jeez, it's like you erased everything. Like everything was one singular layer, which is not. It's very interesting, though. An interesting effect. <clears throat> well, let's get that other ear done first, and then we can probably decide on what we should do next. You saw me there trying to cheat. <laughs> I was like, hmm, which one of those layers are still vectors? I'm about to take it right over. But nope, it's all rasterized, so I'll well, just make a new one. I feel like I should finish, just completely finish the hands first before working on the face. That way I can just have this whole section done and not have to come back and work on more of it. But I know there's a couple Snorlax in the room, so I don't like when I get a room full of Snorlax. So I have to freaking, like, I have to figure it out. <laughs> I gotta get, that, get those guys up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, Snidey's sitting right there, bro. He's not forgetting anything. I think he's fine. This song, like that last one, has very, very interesting intro, but then it just turns into something flat. These are all the layers for this part. Let me see if it connects with any other layers. Nope. Let me be in. Let's get it down there. There we go. That's nice. Like it. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to work on, on these hands, and I think that will settle it for that little part. And uh, I think this fur too, because you know what? It's, it's fine. It's fine. So I'm gonna merge everything. Well, at least everything I have so far. Mergeable. Bam! There we go. It's all one single layer. Look at that. Isn't that something? Yep.
that's not right. That's not right at all. I think you have to pull this bottom section like all the way over to get that nice round shape. That's it. It's like as tedious as it gets, my friends. It's this. It's this. What well, this is what happens for maybe about uh, maybe about five hours straight. It's just lines and layers, and you just just keep overlapping them, changing the colors, and then over time you merge them down, make it one singular layer, and then you continue doing it over and over and over and over again till you just have a sea of randomly colored lines, well specifically colored lines, not random, but <laughs> I wish at this point I could fast forward but since it's a live stream it can't. Maybe if I had a video I can probably download this after it's done and you can just make a video and then in that video I can like fast forward the whole thing to make it like a speed type thing or something, I don't know. But it's pretty much that. I wish I can like explain that in my normal live streams as well. I probably could just go over it, give you like a little overview of how it works. <sighs> but you know what? I want to go fast. And that's not a Sonic reference. I just I want to go faster than this. <laughs> I, I don't like going slow. I feel like the more I talk, the more I think, and then the slower I get. And I'm already really slow at this. That almost sounded like it was going to be something else, but that track right there is not what I expected. Why is it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know it. It's like it's, it's like some songs that really depend on having like long, long, drawn out beeps. Really does not um, come out very well with this mod because it sounds like it just skips like sections of, of the track, which is what it's doing.
Can I do it? Can I make it happen? What do you guys think? I don't know. What, what, are, you, what are your thoughts? Come on. I need some motivation. Somebody hit me up on Patreon. So I <laughs> Wait. It's Pokemon stuff, my friend. Why am I back down there? I don't need to be down there. Like, if for inst for real, in, in all honesty, there's nothing really going on down there that I need to work on at Lakes right now. I'm gonna leave it alone. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do those paws. This is gonna be nice. Everyone likes paws. That's one of the reasons why I added them. I, you know Lucario does not have any paw prints, right? I don't even think he has paws, he just has black hands. However, for some odd mystical reason, people like the concept of having those, and for some odd reason, Lucario stuff is more popular with them than without them. So, I'm adding them for that reason only. Not because it's right, because it's actually wrong. He also doesn't have nails. What are female Xerox? I don't know what Xerox are. Kid. You guys are making stuff up, aren't you? Alright, let me Google this thing. Alright, I'm curious to see what this is. Also, I'm gonna I have to do a test of my live stream, so just give me a second. It might be a little buggy for a second because I'm gonna actually run it to see what it looks like on my screen. So give me about 10 seconds on that. And be done soon. Alright, let's do it. Let's, uh, what we're gonna do. Hey, more thumbs. Thanks, buds. I think the more thumbs that I get, the, more, the longer I'm gonna live stream for sure. <laughs> the more thumbs. I, I guess that's some motivation, right? Thumbs? I like thumbs. All right, I'm gonna open the yeah, edit free tree. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with the layer outline. Let's see how it works. Let's see what happens when I click on it. Let's see what happens. Double click. I just double clicked it. it didn't pop up. Oh, there we go. It pops up, and then you can see my adjustments. Yeah. Okay, cool. It works. I, I was just testing that to see what happens. I would like them to go right there <laughs> in screen. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. All right, guys. I guess I'm going to be streaming a lot longer because I just got two extra thumbs stuck up in there. So that is like uh, that is that is the the, the ideal fit for uh, for this. So let's go ahead and continue. <laughs> You guys are sticking them thumbs in there, dude. Wow. All right. <laughs> All right.
Here we go. Thumbs. <laughs> I did not ignore you. I did not ignore you. <laughs> I just thought <laughs> I changed up my wording, dude. I changed it up so that it, it kind of works for, for you and everyone else. Kind of like answered the question covert. I don't know. Jeez. Where where'd you expect them to go? Wherever you think the thumbs would go, put them there. You asked twice, but you didn't give me both of your thumbs. I want them both. I can draw and look at the chat. It's not efficient at all. <laughs> it's not. It's like give it a little peek. Like, oh, hey, how you doing, buddy? Oh, man, oh, it just looks great. Oh, what? Now I'm drawing a line on another screen. How'd that happen? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go and do a little bit of the face. Uh, no, 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 I can't. See, I'm trying to jump to it. I'm trying to jump to it. I'm getting excited now because of all those damn thumbs. You guys are interesting. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and fix this. Make sure that hand looks good, and then after that, how long has the live stream been going on? By the way, any ideas? I for, I forget. I haven't checked. I think it's been maybe about two hours or three hours or something like that. Something along those lines. Trust me, you're gonna like the next thing I do with Lucario. You're gonna love it. It's gonna, it's not gonna be rather though. So you don't have to worry about seeing him again or her. It depends on which one I use, but you're not gonna have to worry about that. But you're gonna like it. You're gonna like. You're gonna be like, whoa, color that, please. You're gonna be begging me to color that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to just, I have to laugh at that. All right, so I did mention that, and that was maybe like so many months ago, and the concept behind that was that once I finished drawing that first thing, then I would start another stream for the next thing. However, the first thing has never been drawn. All right, that's still in queue, so it's just sitting there, not drawn. All right. If you uh, sat through my stream for, for the most part of it, you would recall that um, I said that there's a whole lot of art that I haven't been able to get done yet because I was taking commissions and all this other stuff. So I'm trying to avoid commissions. Uh, I couldn't even do a commission for my own character, which is weird because someone commissioned me to draw my own character doing stuff and I have not been able to do that because I am so behind. Uh, and so therefore, one person can get a commission at a time from this thing. Yes, that's true. And one person has. However, that commission has not been done yet. So until that, co that commission gets done, I can't do another one on top of that. Because what we're doing there is just stacking on stuff that I can't get done. So, just gotta be a little bit patient. You'll get your chance at some point. Oh. My. God. E okay, good. <laughs> uh. Here we go. Hmm. 
Okay. It's no thumb. Mm. Don't worry, buddy. There's gonna be a. <laughs> I got a thumb. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot more more streams. Okay, the thing about this month and the reason why, um, you guys haven't really been able to see me a lot this month is because school has been ridiculous and I don't know if anybody else here is in school but uh, it's one of those things that I really think uh, shouldn't really be as important as it is uh, but no dislikes okay <laughs> school's good school's good I just feel like some classes that are thrown in there should not really be thrown in there okay I just feel like it's slowing down the process like we want to graduate okay that, that's the point that's, that's everything that everybody wants to do who's in this live stream and whoever else is in school and if you're already out of school I think you can probably relate a little bit to what I'm saying there was a lot of unnecessary stuff that is being thrown at us I don't think that that's that's cool that's not cool at all you know what I mean so uh, right now I'm taking um, I'm taking three unnecessary classes towards my arts degree. Um, I don't know why I have to do that, but that's the way school works, I guess. And it's kind of taking away from you guys, because in all that time that I'm sitting down there wasting my time learning about some stuff that is completely irrelevant to art, um, I could be doing art. You know what I mean? It should just be as simple as possible. It should be simple. You should be able to go into uh, whatever places that teaches art or whatever else that you would like to get your certification from or your uh, degree from or whatnot and prove that you know the stuff. Take a test, draw something, paint something, prove that you can do what you can do and then graduate because they affirm that you can do the stuff that they're going to teach you. Not say, hey, we know you know this stuff, but you actually have to pay money and then spend valuable time out of your life and away from your fans to do uh, classes regarding stuff that you already know, and then you can graduate. How's that sound? I mean, this makes no sense. Oh, jeez. I'm sure there's colleges out there that do that, but I, I don't know. It's just credit hours. They, they, they want you to do credit hours because you need to you need, just need to do that I don't get it I don't know who else can agree with me on that one but I'm sorry about your tablet there buddy <laughs> exactly I was like yes you need to know the human anatomy okay first off okay you need to learn how to fly an airplane um and uh, let's see what else you need to do hmm okay uh trigonometry do you like trigonometry no okay good you have to do that and uh then you can graduate with a uh, um bachelor's in, in fine arts how's that sound what <laughs> why? why like i don't even under i sometimes i don't understand it I'm sure that there's a reason, and I hope there's nobody inside the stream that is is one of those people that are totally behind having those additional um, useless um, classes in in your electives. But I just uh, they're, they're electives for sure. And you know what? To be honest with you, electives are also dumb. They want you to explore outside of your degree by incorporating electives. What is that? That makes no sense. It's just like something to delay your time in the school like to keep you there a little bit longer like in addition to your degree we want you to also take electives these are completely irrelevant to your degree and are not really like a required course they're just random stuff we want you to do so you can explore other stuff that you can do what <laughs> no just let me do the art classes and leave I got fans waiting for me to do my stuff. I got people that want to actually see me draw. I don't know why I really need a piece of paper to say that I can draw, but if I can prove 
that I can draw? Can I get that piece of paper so that I can see that I got a piece of paper saying that I can draw? God, what is that? <laughs> what? It's weird. It's literally a piece of paper. Alright guys, I am back. I don't know if you realize, but I went quiet there for a moment because something came up, so I had to go off the mic for just a second. Okay? Or, uh, th three seconds. Three minutes, okay. Are so right like can we understand that you guys probably don't understand like <sighs> it's weird it's the weirdest thing because they they force you not only to buy the the class I mean of course student loans is like you're buying it you're buying it with loans but you also have to buy these expensive textbooks for these classes that you don't need It's, it's bad. It's bad. And someone needs to step up and say, hey, guess what? We're not going to do this anymore, okay? We're not going to do it anymore. We're not going to take it. Probably won't win, but it doesn't hurt to try. I don't know who's going to step up. It's not going to be me, though. I don't care. I'm almost done with college. Almost. I'm almost done. I know I have one degree, but it's an associate's, and it's not good enough for me. I need to get 
I need to get the, the full, full size degree. Full size. We call it full size. <laughs> uh, I don't think the, um, the, the fine arts degree is going to get me any further than what I've, it's, my other degrees got me, but it's fine. Can't hurt for try. I already started, so I'm going to finish. That's what I told her. Oh, sweet. But I got a question for your for you with the Australian degree. Um, does it can you transfer it back to wherever you originated from without issues or, or are you just kind of like stuck with it? Because I would like to transfer it back. I'd like to use it be like I have this wonderful degree from the University of Australia. Is it okay if I can work here at Google? You're like, um, we don't know. <laughs> Not sure yet. Are you sure about that? It's weird. I didn't even know Australia was an island. I thought it was, um, I thought it was a continent. So what exactly makes an island a continent then? Do you ever, ever think about that? Because in all honesty, continents are big giant islands. I guess it's just the position of where they are in the plates or something. Mm, weird. Can any uh, scientist tell me that? I didn't take that class in uh, college. <laughs> Can anybody here who actually accidentally took that class because they were required to tell me if, what makes uh, Australia the biggest island? However, continents are not islands. <laughs> yeah, back to your tablet. Okay, tell me what's going on. Are you actually, are you trying to use Photoshop, buddy? I want to know. Hey, hey. It looks like we actually have someone, you know, attempting this thing. This is cool. It's the next coolest thing from, I don't know. I have no idea what cool stuff that, that I could possibly relate this to. Come on, 1996. By the way, very interesting year, 1996. That was a fun time for me, man. I loved that year. That's actually one of my favorite years. Some of the, my favorite music came out back then. <sighs> I, I wish I knew what I knew now back then, though. You know what I mean? Wish I was as skilled as I was back then. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I was thinking. I was like, it has to do with something with the plates, right? Like where it is positioned. But that still, it still makes no sense though, because, because 
all continents are placed in the ocean. So why is that one considered not to be a... I don't know. You know what? I'm asking too many questions. I just leave it alone. <laughs> just leave it alone and let it be. It's, it is what it is no matter what. I mean, it's not like whatever I ask is going to change that fact. Or say. I think actually could have made that that little eye drop see that eye drop that's what is, that's what I call it like an eye drop or like a sweat drop I could have made that without having to do all those steps that was way too complicated so let me show you uh, the simple way of doing what I just did there which took me a lifetime to do for no good reason at all so see this red circle tool I'm gonna duplicate that bam and steal it and then let me go right over here and change that stroke to gray. There we go. That's done. Now I'm going to change the size of it ever so slightly to make it a about four. Ooh, that's too thick. Maybe. Well, yeah, that's fine. Anyway, no matter. Also, I'm going to change. that stroke right
Actually, I'm going to replicate that one more time and I'm going to use it for the, the top one because it looks so weird. I think it just needs to not be there at all because it has like three, four, or five layers inside of it. That it's just no need to have that much work put into this. Whoa, that did not delete it. There must have been two of these same layers. Here we go. I've done it. And I'm going to replicate this one right here and... Let's do a little bit like, yeah, like about that. That looks better. That looks better. It looks less complicated and less all messed up. Yeah, I like it. I like the. I actually like the claws. I was skeptical on him at first because it, he doesn't have them, but I think this actually does work for it. I am shocked that it does. At the same time, though. I'm thinking this side needs to have just one circle around it. I mean, one line. I forgot what the lyrics were for this song, but because of the edits, like the intro is so good. Go back. I gotta get the intro. I gotta get the intro a little bit more. I want. I wanted to go in and mod it so that it was just that part because you can take the lyrics out completely in in um, audio listening. You can go in and you can actually go and change. You can take the lyrics completely out, and that song would just be like on in my top, top. I would say top ten. Cause it's awesome. It's not. It's been modded, obviously. <laughs> it's been modded a little bit uh, for the YouTube thing, but it actually does sound really good, even outside of this. I'm gonna actually go back, revert on the on the nails. Let me see that. Yeah, I'm gonna revert on the nails. <clears throat> no, line's not actually needed. In fact, the lyrics don't last very long in the original version of it, but in the modded version, because it's it's the 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 frequency switch actually changed the speed of the, every song, and certain elements of the songs have been like slowed down and it kind of been moved around a little bit. So that's the reason why it sound it 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 it, it takes a lot longer to get through the lyric section of it, and for that reason, it is not acceptable for this video. I'll leave it alone. Oh, I did say that after I um, after I got that little part in for the the, the, um, the hands, I was gonna color in that section, but look at me now, I'm working on something completely different. And what is this? Can anyone explain that to me? I can't even understand it myself. What is that? What do you mean asking questions about stuff like what? What is this whole pointy? Oh, is, oh, that's his um, <clears throat> that's his uh, supposed to be his, his spike on his hand. Okay, cool. I got it. Okay, don't forget to hit that uh, thumbs up button before you roll out. You don't have to subscribe. I don't really give a rat's ass about that, but I mean, um, subscribe at least. I mean, not subscribe. Thumbs up. Or, or both. I don't care. Seeing as I'm going to be streaming here a little bit more, right? Might as well. It's 
threw a little bit of a threw a little bit of extra my way. And by a little more, I mean a lot, because if you look through my gallery, you can see a lot of the stuff that is uh, <clears throat> is is not completed. Some of that stuff that is not completed has not been colored yet. Guess where it's going to get colored. Ooh, you know what? I don't have to draw another spike. I don't even have to do that because this spike can, can also be modified to fit in that section. Oh, wait, no, it's not. <laughs> it's already rasterized and merged with all the rest of the layers, so I do have to make a new one. There you go, buddy. One good spike. I made it a little less fat because I don't understand why it was so fat to begin with. He's not a Rylu. Uh, and then uh, let's continue. Okay, okay, cool, okay, cool. You gotta fight with Photoshop a little bit to get the goods. You know what I want? I want some cookies. I want to stuff my face with cookies. I want them now. You guys got any cookies? Any other means to get cookies for me? I'm hungry. <laughs> so, I think there's cookies down there. I'm gonna go down there and sneak away a couple of them. They might not be the best ones. Maybe because I've had them too many times, but I think they'll suffice for this long live stream, right? That's all I ever wanted. Just a few cookies. They wouldn't give it to me. Why didn't you even give me one cookie? <laughs> Deltad's gone, ah. Uh. Uh, he had adult life stuff. And that means. It means he had the nut. All right, let's go ahead and add this line right here. He missed out on the good part. Oh. See, this is why I actually should have uh, started coloring earlier. Well, filling in. Fill and shade. So I can show you the two th other things when it comes to cell shading, which is what this is. All right. Uh, so, you'd be surprised, but this, what I'm doing right now actually does work with not only this, but also works with um, the shade part of it too. I mean, I don't see why I need to just leave that open. Might as well close it. You know, if you're already done it, just finish it. Finish it off and move on from there. Don't go back shade and color and then come back to the same spot and find that it's just open.
All right, so for those who do not know what cell shading is, it's kind of this concept here where you where you color in the areas that you uh, you seal off. You know, it's like making a swimming pool, you know what I mean? And then filling it with water. If you uh, have any openings, any holes, any gaps, or anything like that, it won't fill in properly or it'll start leaking. So it will leak out to the background or whatever you have outside of it. And it's pretty much the same concept with any, you know, art. It's like you have a, you have a line and then you fill everything inside of the line that you've created or a circle, ellipse, or whatever, whatnot. Same, same stuff here. So we're just going to fill in what's inside there and we're going to keep it within the lines. And in order to do that, you have to make sure all the lines are already covered and sealed and are not open. So there, there can't be any open lines like, like this one. Although, uh, I'll be honest with you, in this case right here, I really don't care much for that open line because um, we haven't really gotten down here yet. We will. We will, okay? I see a, I see a 10 thumbs up, which is cool, but I want to finish it, all right? And if we get enough thumbs up, we might, I might even finish it and post it, like right away. I'll post it, and I can post a video too, and I'll say... Thank these guys. That's the reason why I can't post it so freaking soon. Or not, you know, whatever. I don't know. That's supposed to be a blue line, right? No, no. Yeah, it's blue. Nothing but blue lines, my friends. Nothing but blue. The rainbow. All right. I'm not gonna mess around down here too much because there's nothing here to color right now. Just not really much of anything. It's a Barbie doll. I mean, it's a Pokemon doll. I'm sure they're crafted in the same fashion, just bald. Lacking all the... Those lines are actually going a lot faster than I thought they would. <laughs> YouTube? What? How is it? Oh, how is it even humanly pulsing on? <laughs> you guys are funny as shit. Oh my gosh. YouTube, how? How could you let this happen? Those Pokemon have bulges. They shouldn't have bulges. <laughs> I didn't see the, the reason why it's possible is because of the way I made the sketches. If you recall, the sketches were done in a specific way and it enables me to do this. Yes. Interestingly enough, right? It enables me to draw the characters and display the cell shade capabilities of Photoshop CS3 in its glory. <laughs> I 
I think, I don't know. I feel like everything that I do, it has a little bit of it. It's questionableness to it, right? You'd be surprised. It's more so than even just in art alone. I do some crazy stuff, bud. <laughs> okay, so if I don't see you typing, I'm gonna blame your chicken soup for everything, okay? Global warming. <laughs> oh man. It's like that. That dude's chicken soup is the one who did it. Right. You know about you, but I like that. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate the look of it. <clears throat> Alright, so what I'm going to do next is going to be a little bit of cell shade for... I think I'm going to get caught up in this whole section right here because of where the knife is. Um, and then the other part right here is actually the, Lucari the back of Lucario's leg. So it's supposed to go like from here to here and logically it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever but hey why not I'm just gonna do it it, makes, it looks good looks like it'll work right my lord that is heavy so I don't know <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess it could work. The color's wrong, but yeah, I guess it could work. I'm gonna adjust that leg ever so slightly so it's lower because it makes no sense that it's that big. At that perspective, it would not be that big. No, nope, it wouldn't be. It would never be. It can never be. All right. Here, we're gonna keep that head there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of, uh, of uh, slack on the head because um, I'm thinking that that head might come out, come down a little bit in size when I uh, when I actually draw it in. So right now we're just gonna leave it like that, about that size. I'll leave it alone. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and merge all the magical layers that I have put down so far. Everything that you see here is going to become one single. Oh wait, I can't do that. <laughs> Thought I could, but I can't. I would explain to you how I made that do that, where, where it became an ellipse uh, circle kind of shape. Uh, it's really, really, really difficult to explain. See all those little tabs around the, 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 the square, the little grid that you get when you're, you're doing the edit free transform? You have to kind of manipulate it in a way <clears throat> over and over and over again. So you actually have to go back and redo, 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 redo. And then when you do it a couple times, the lines will start looking the correct way or the way you you want it to look in certain little parts of it and then you just work from there from there and then you get what you want but you have to do it for a while if you really want to get it that one right there I can't really like there's not much tutorial that I can give you on that that would help you um, 
do that any faster. Like when you do it the first time, you'll see what I mean. You, you can feel it. Like you know you need to hit that and you need to move it in this direction just a little bit. and You'll get it. You'll definitely get it. I really, really, really want people to try it. I want people to try it and see if they can, if they can do this with Photoshop. I mean, that's if you need to. If you already have Psy or you're using another program and you feel like that's working for you better, then you can do that. But for those guys who are sketching on paper and you really want to try and and, and and get your art to like the next level and you want to get it, like you want to do some digital art, you want to actually have something digital, you want to scan your stuff but you don't have a tablet or whatnot, you can do this with a computer mouse, I'm telling you. If you look, if you go back to the very beginning of this live stream, you can see it. Where I, I did, I tried it with the computer mouse and it worked just fine. You can do it too, you can definitely do it, I guarantee it. You can make some awesome lines. I guess that's what it's about. Get some awesome lines going, my friend. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so uh, I think with that section, let me see. I think I know what is missing right here. And it wasn't very apparent before, but you can kind of see it a little bit now. Doesn't Lucario have those little things behind his head? And I was just working on one, but when his other side have one as well, somewhere. Yeah. For those people who just joined the stream, you guys may realize that the music sounds a little weird. Uh, that's because I have a mod added to it so that uh, it is uh, playable for YouTube without having uh, additional uh, implications. So that's the reason why the music sounds a little bit off. If you go to my live stream on Picardo, you'll be able to hear the music as clear as normal. Uh, unfortunately, the stream for Picardo, I can't, I can't dual stream yet because I have no goddamn clue how to do it. But one of these dice. All right, here we go. That's good. All the layers are now going to be merged into one singular layer. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. All right, there it is. It's done. <laughs> that wasn't too hard. See, it's all one layer now. So with this layer, I'm going to duplicate it. There it is. Okay, now it's two layers. So you can't tell, but there. if I take this away, you can see that there's one layer and there's another layer behind it. What we're going to do with this layer behind it is we're actually going to lower the opacity all the way down to maybe, let's see, 11. 11 is fair enough. So now you can't see it, can you? But it's there. See? He's there. The reason why I'm doing this is because when we add the fill layers, that that layer right there, that extra layer on top, will be multiplied again. Every single time you redo another layer, this layer right here will be multiplied again a second time, and it'll be multiplied again a third time. And by the time you're done doing it over and over and over and over and over, you'd be about maybe, I would say about 60 or 80% on this line right here. So it'll be almost the same as this, a little bit blur, a little bit out. The problem is if you don't do that and you keep it solid 100% like this right here, the lines will multiply on top of each other over and over and over. And what will happen is the lines will start getting pixelated all the way around. You won't be able to see it unless you zoomed in. So to avoid that, that's why I lowered the opacity to this. You can't see it. But over time, as I'm working on it, it'll just get, it'll get more and more and more times, every more times that I work on it, it'd get more and more and more without becoming pixelated. So it's not pixelated, it's just getting more opacity to it. All right. And of course the fill layer will also get more opacity, which is fine because it's behind these lines. All right, so I'm gonna lock this top layer. Yay. 
<laughs> I mean, you, you know what? You honestly don't have to, uh... You don't have to scan your stuff in, to be honest with you. If you really do have... You can, you can take a picture of it. And you can still get into Photoshop, and you can still, uh... You can still ink it that way. I mean, picture's not ideal, but shit, it'll work. You just you just change the size and you're good to go. All right, I'm gonna start adding in the fills, my friend. The fills. We're gonna start off with, I guess Lucario's is good good way to start. I'm gonna start with his eyeballs, which will look very odd because they're the only thing that's gonna be filled in in here. Oh, whoops. So I'm taking my paint bucket tool and lowering the uh, tolerance to maybe I'm uh, raising it. Raising it to 10, and then I'm going to, first off, once you lower the opacity, make sure you make a new layer and then merge the two layers down to each other. That way you render it as being a low opacity like line, because right now it wasn't. But see, now it says 100% opacity, but it, the lines are still transparent. That way you can color it in. Now let me show you what happens underneath this. So you can't see the lines. Here you go. All right. So I'm gonna add. I just add flat colors. I'm not gonna do any cell shade stuff yet because the cell shade stuff is almost the same as doing the lines itself. So instead of doing that, I'll leave that alone and, and we'll just work on this part for now. Notice how many times I clicked this just then. I clicked it three times for that corner. You can click it more times if you want to get more fill. What it does when you click it, let me see if I can show you. It's the same thing in that example that I showed earlier tonight, but I'll show it to you here. So you see what happened? I clicked it three times and you can see it's starting to bleed over a little bit. Look at that, see? I clicked it again and it bleeds over. The more times you click it, the more times it bleeds over into the lines that's there. And of course, when you get really sharp edges that you can't do anything with, you can take your paintbrush tool at 100% opacity and just go in and, and straighten those up. The center of his eye is going to be a simple color here. For this part, you cannot, you cannot, uh, just warn you ahead of time, you cannot if you're using the color here in the center, unless you lower your tolerance to zero, and even if you lower your tolerance to zero, if the color is the exact same as the fill, it will fill the entire thing, including the the line around it. You don't want to do that. So, see that? That's one. That was one click. But watch what happens when I click it again. See, now it filled everything because it's the same color. Even though the opacity is less different, the color is still the same. And Photoshop will recognize that and it'll still color the whole thing as one color. Doesn't matter if it's at 10 or if it's at 1, it's still gonna do it. And then you're gonna get this shitty looking thing here. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. Huh. Alright, but usually, ideally, you wanna do this and then you wanna take your paintbrush tool and you wanna go around and just erase away these lines right here. And then you avoid having that pixelation sneak out and, and, and go into your fill. You don't want that. See, that looks good. You don't have to worry about that. And now even when you look at it right here, you can see that it's not going outside of that border that you made. Okay, so let's see that. I hit Control S for the first time in, in about an hour, so that was scary. Thank you for telling me that I haven't saved for forever. <laughs> My eyes are huge right now. I'm like, oh man, I haven't saved in a while. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna go and fill in Lucario's face. Usually this is pretty simple. It's just point and click, pretty much. Oh, okay, I guess not. <laughs> So we're going to click on this. That's his face color right there. 
and then we're going to paste that color right in there. One click, two clicks, one click, two clicks. That's all you really need for his face, I think. One click, two click. Uh, then we're going to go right here, and then we're going to go here, click on the, the, the gray, click that twice, and there we go. We have his face almost completely colored in less than a minute. Now it's not really done. Oh shit, come on. Let's add in the shadow colors. So this is just an area where his ear is a different color than, it's not different, it's different uh, shade of blue. Two clicks for that as well. When I say clicks, I'm clicking the mouse twice. And I'm doing this with the mouse, by the way, just letting you know. So you just one click, two clicks. What it does, like I said, is it, it bleeds it over. See, look, if you look right here, see it's bleeding over. Let me go back. See that? That was one click right there. Then I clicked it again. See, now it's over a little bit more. If I click it a third time, it's almost completely over the line. No, we don't want that. So two clicks good enough. And I'm clicking, I'm using the paint bucket tool and I'm using it at a uh, 10. I'm using it at 10, uh, to the tolerance of 10. If you raise the tolerance, you can do less clicks. So if you raise the tolerance to 35, you can do less clicks. But the only problem is when you come to sensitive areas where the color is close, like for instance, this is all blue, right? So the tolerance will be more for blue because you're working on blue than you're working if you're working on like gray, gray colors, for example. But the tolerance if you're working on gray would be more tolerant to black if you are, you know, working on black, for example. So that's the reason why you have to have the tolerance at a low level. It's better to have it at a low level and just click it more times because you have more control. If you do 35, you can only click that one time. And if you click it a second time, more than likely, you're just going to eat up the whole thing. So you're going to see it bleed over. What the hell? This head needs to be worked on a little bit. What is that? That looks weird. Unlock that and look, let's fix this part right here. What is that? Mother. Ugh. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, there's gonna be some more stuff that you will do uh, when you get to this point. Uh, I'm gonna lock that top layer. That's a correction that needs to be made. Uh, you might not run into that. That was a that was an error on my part. So you not you might not run into that problem, or you might run into problems like that. I mean, it's gonna happen either way. I mean, you're gonna fix them. That's all you gotta do is just a little patience. Patience is is a huge deal when it comes to this. I mean. It pays off in the end if, you, if you're patient. If you want to get like, if you want to get through it quickly, then you're gonna have some problems. So here's my first example of the shell shade, the cell shade part of it. Okay. So remember how we were doing the lines? It's the same process for this to for the cell shade part. You pick the color that you want to cell shade. So this right here would be the uh, well cell shade, the shadows. Sorry, we already we, we were working on cell shading just now. This is. This is the cell shade. <clears throat> My mind is a little tired. Okay. You pick the color that you want to cell shade. That one right there is the one I picked. All right. Then you draw your line where the shadow is going to be. All right. There is the shadow. That's the point where the shadow is going to be. And then you add as many lines as you need to make the shadow more defined or less defined. Well, not less defined, but as defined as you need it to be. Okay. 
There you go. Now, like the last time, we duplicate the layer that we want to change the color of. So instead of having to rework the line, you just go in here, you grab the darker version of this. So that would be like a darker gray. Grab that dark gray. If you have a reference next button nearby, you can take that. Then you're gonna go and erase the parts of that layer you do not need. That would be the parts that go into the ear. You can erase that. And then the blue section, because this is a good, good example of what I was talking about earlier, but now you can really kind of see it. You see how that blue is starting to leak from behind the, the layer on top of it? See that? You don't want that, all right? So in order to erase that, you're gonna click on this layer right here, you're gonna rasterize it, and then you're gonna erase just a blue section. And you're gonna do the same thing for the black section of it too. This black section, you're gonna check and see if there's any line here. I already erased it already, so I kinda of jumped ahead. But you would see it behind here, you just erase away the part that's black on the overlap. And then you're good, it looks like that. So merge all those layers together. And there you go. You're gonna merge that layer down to the bottom layer, and then you're gonna hit that paint bucket tool right into the areas that you wish to fill in. If you don't wish to have the ear be one solid color, you can change that. I don't wish to change that. I wanna keep it like that for now. Uh, I will go in and I'll do the I'll do a little bit of uh, work on that as well. But if you don't wish to do that, you can also you can make it a lighter color, and then you can use the circle tool to actually go in and add a, a quick shadow to it. It's really fast. Doesn't even hurt. You won't even remember doing it. <laughs> That's how quick it, it it would be. So same process for here. I don't have to really go over it again. But actually, you know what? I'll do it one more time. I'll do it over. One more time, I'll explain it. Okay. So you draw on your you draw on your line. You go to Edit Free Transform. You transform it nice and neat. Okay. There you go. You have it. Then you're gonna duplicate it. If you this is you're only duplicating it if you have multiple like shades in it. Like see, this is this. I mean, that multiple colors. This is a different color than this right here. If you don't want to redo that whole thing over. And you don't have to redraw that whole line. You just duplicate that line right there. And then you change the color of the top layer. Because that's on top of the bottom one. There you go. Now the areas that you have that are blue. Or the other color that you want it to change. You just click it with the eraser tool. Rasterize it. So it's going to ask you if you want to rasterize. You click OK. And now it's rasterized. You go in and you just erase it away. There you go, erased, nice. And then you see right here, look at that. See that, that's the blue line we're talking about. We don't want that blue line to be in there at all. So you go to the bottom layer, the one behind it, the one that you duplicated, you click on that and you rasterize it too. Now you erase that line away. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing here, here. And for this one, you're gonna erase a lot. Now for the gray, you're gonna go in the, for the, well not all the gray, gosh not. Uh, just the, the part that covers the eye, because the eye is gonna have a different type of shade. So you don't have to really worry about messing with that. Okay. And then after you're done, after you're finished and there's no gray and there's no overlap between the two, then you can merge everything down into one single layer. There you go. Now there's gonna be little parts that you will be able to see if you really look at it. So you look, I'll, I'll do it right here, bam. You can't see it from a distance. I mean, you can get away with it. And if you look at my artwork, you will see there's a good couple of artwork that actually has the line still in there. But if you zoom in as far as you, well not as far as possible, but you can see there's a little line right here where it transitions over. You can just erase that with the paint the paintbrush tool and you're good. If you wish to keep his ear or keep the darker section of his face with a really, really hard shadow, if that's your choice, like it's gonna be my choice, 
you just take that dark the darkest uh, tone or whatever it is and you just paste it right in there get the hard angles with the paintbrush tool and then there you go it's done you don't have to really work too hard on that now yeah, you can notice his eyes are a little bit bright they're glowing we're gonna fix that a little bit right now <clears throat> by using <clears throat> shadow in order to shadow his eye you're gonna do the same method over again this is the third time you're gonna do the same method over again and you're gonna do it multiple times after this and it's not the only time you'll do it you're gonna do it throughout so you take uh, your line tool you draw the uh, diagonal line free transform it back into the space that you wish to work in edit free transform or hit that transform button if you're already in the transform already and then you're gonna draw the line to whatever you want the shadow to come up to and stop once you have that sorted out as you can tell you have two different colors here so you're going to go right up to here you're going to go right up here you're going to right click i believe it is or left click one of the two clicks and you're going to hit duplicate layer you can also do this by going up to the top over here in your menu and hit layer and then go to duplicate layer either way it works either way just the shorter way is just to right click on that all right or left click i don't know which one is um and then you're going to change that color to whatever the shadow color is going to be for the eye so whatever the darker color is going to be for that one you're going to change it to that so select that color hit ok and now you have that the same stuff applies for this just as before with the other stuff you're going to have to zoom in like that and you're going to have to look and erase the parts that kind of protrude out that's usually where you would start on both of the layers you're going to rasterize them and you're going to erase that Then you're going to go in and check the overlap. The gray overlaps with the red, so you're going to click the gray first, and you're going to erase the gray from there, so you can get, see the gray is disappearing. And then for the red, the red portion of it, you're going to erase the part that goes over the center of the eye. You're going to erase the portion that goes over the gray and then any section that goes over to gray is going to get erased. There you go. Now merge all those layers together. And then use your paint bucket tool. Now it's just point and click from here. You can double click from here, but you're going to get this kind of thing. Okay. See that? See how it just bled over and now it's all pixelated? You can only click one time when you're fusing two colors together on this and they're the same color line. If you do it, you're going to get pixelated lines like this that are going to look jacked up and you have to do them over again. However, if you click one time, like I just said, point and click, you can go like this with the paintbrush tool, you can clean that up and then you're left with one solid line that you don't have to work twice. Voila! Hey, there it is. I think I'm going to fill this one up. I just want it to be darker in that corner. That's just my own choice. Not needed, but whatever. Same goes for the red section. You're going to zoom all the way in. Oh, this one doesn't have it, but... Just in case. Sometimes it will fill pretty nicely like that, and you won't have that problem. A lot of times it won't so just keep that in mind all right same process for the other side and then after that we can do some other stuff oh yes hey thanks Bodhi Did you leave me a like? Just just throw me a thumbs up. Doesn't cost you anything. Or does it cost you some stuff to leave me a thumbs?
If it does cost you some, don't do it. I don't really know how YouTube works, really. <laughs> Scary. Alright, let's add some shadow underneath his uh, nose there, and then we move on from there. The method's going to be the same for throughout. So throughout the process, when you ink it, you use the same method. Draw the line in colors, and then you transform and you warp it, then you you fuse it, but you layer it. You layer it properly. And then when you get to coloring it, it's the same process again. You draw a line, you free transform it, and then warp it. And then after that, you merge the line, you layer it properly. If you don't layer it properly, you're going to get screwed on the back end because it'll just be so hard for you to correct it. The more colors you put in there, the harder it gets to uh, edit it when you actually fuse the stuff down. So you really want to get it right the first time. And then, like I said, overlap properly. You really don't want to, you don't want to have stuff run into other stuff like this because when you're done, it's really, really diff difficult to edit it if you made a mistake somewhere around here. So you want to go in and you want to clean up all that that stuff beforehand. And it just makes it easier to have this, this all this open space ready to go for whatever other color you're going to put in there. Alright, now that that's done and you don't have any more cell shading to do for this section, you can go ahead and start using the full colors of whatever you plan on actually throwing in there. So like for instance, the back right here where is uh, the ear that goes back there. You can just double click that. For this part you can double click that. Uh, let's see. I think we can also double click this one as well. Let's see if we can do that. And that's going to be a darker layer. I'm going to work on it, but that color needs to be a little darker. Like this needs to be the like same color as that. See the sharp edges? That's gonna just be hell to color. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna work on it in a second, but it will happen. Just just prepare for that. It will happen. There's nothing you can do about that. So the sharp corners really Photoshop has problems editing those. You can do it on a back layer, which is what I'm gonna do right now, which is where you make another layer behind the already the fill layer you already have, and then you just go in and you Sorry, there's something that needs to be right here. I didn't see it before, but it's, it's, it's missing. All right. And you, as I, like I just said before, actually, before this pipe popped up, you will make mistakes, okay? That's just it. That's just the way art is, is making mistakes and then correcting the mistakes. 
no one's perfect, so you will make mistakes. We all make mistakes. <laughs> it's it, the, the most important thing is don't leave a mistake that you can, yeah, that you see. If you see something that's a mistake, fix it. That's like the number one thing that you can do to improve your art is is to fix the mistakes when when you spot them when you when you know they're there don't leave them and then just like settle with what you have if you can fix something fix it even if it's a big deal like even if it's something huge i would say fix that especially if it's big because that would just ruin your whole art you know it's supposed to be like ah oh, it could have been better i see a lot of people do that they make that mistake where all it takes is time and a little bit of effort and you can fix your own stuff especially if you know how to fix it don't just post it and say well you know it could have been better but i i got too lazy or something came up or no don't do that don't do that to yourself and your art and your and your fans they would like to see you at your best all right Ugh. So I think that color back there would be more to leaning towards um, the black, this black right here from the, from the, from that. Let's see, that looks like it. But that Actually, we're going to go with a darker color. I'll show you why in a second. <laughs> oops. <laughs> That's an oopsie on my part. I'm like... Let's get some of those darker colors in there, huh? Let's do it. Oh yeah, I think that's the darker colors right there, my friend. Let's, let's put them in. Oh, look, I got some more thumbs. Guys, you're doing great on the thumbs, I gotta tell you. That is some good thumb action. <laughs> it's interesting yes but also you have to keep in mind that you want to keep it as simple as possible you don't want to go too crazy with it and and as you can see from from before when i was working on it there was a lot of layers there was maybe about 30 layers at one point but look at the look how many layers are now on this on the screen. 
You don't actually need all those layers to stay with you when you're working on your art. There's actually two layers, or three. One, two, and three. That's it. That's really all you need. You don't need all those layers. Now, if you were going to edit something at this point, like as I said, it's going to get a lot harder for you to edit things as you go along. So the more stuff you add, the harder it's going to become to edit. So at this point, if you wanted to edit something, you'd probably have to redraw the lines for that part of it. Sorry to tell you. Here's a way to make a really, really, really quick shadow. Take the circle tool, go right over here. See this little square box right here that doesn't have little vector points next to it? You can actually draw yourself a rasterized circle. So it comes in as rasterized. Hit the shift button and then draw that nice little circle in there. And then bam, you have a circle and you have a shadow. You have everything that you need right there in the little corner. <sighs> of course it takes multiple attempts. Alright, so I want to make this one a little wider. You have to make sure you take that magic wand tool and select the whole little area first. And then after that, you're good. Now, that's not to say it's perfect. It's not a perfect circle, and it's not perfect for what you're working on. You have to choose the right times to make it work. If it doesn't work, you can always get rid of it as well. And just work with something else. Nothing is set in stone. Like, you don't have to necessarily accept everything that you put on the on the canvas you can always change it you know what i mean it's not like you also don't have to accept music that sounds like some shit i mean uh, a dookie kakamokish butch ruffle all right Okay, all right, all right. I think, I don't know. I, is there anything that I didn't cover today? I don't think there is anything that I did not cover today. Nope, I think I got all of them. That looks okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that horn. All right, so the reason why I said use the dark colors first is because it's a lot easier to go from the dark colors if you're using the circle tool than to go from the, the really bright colors down to the, the dark color. And then you have to use a line. To use the line tool, you can, you, as you can tell from my previous uses, it's a lot harder to use that line tool, and it's more work for you to use that line tool than if you were going to just use the the straight lips tool or circle tool, in my words. So, fill it in, in the darkest color that you can possibly imagine, and then after that, I'm just kidding. Fill in the dark color that you plan on using for the shadow, and then take your circle tool and then fade it. Uh, draw in the shadow in the direction of where whichever way you want the shadow to be going in in this case it's going to be going in this direction so we're going to leave it like that and we're going to draw another one right over top of it All right there you take the paintbrush tool and, and do a little work in there as well not everything has to be extremely straight, all right, when it comes to drawing in and sketching in stuff. The same rule can be applied for larger areas too. Like for instance, this big yellow section of the chest area, I guess, call it that. We can go over here, click on that, and then, and then we're gonna shade it in. Take the paintbrush, paint, paint bucket tool at 100% opacity, please. There we go. And then we're gonna take the bright yellow that we saw and used earlier, and then click on that same tool right at the very top right there, that same one for rasterized shapes. And then we can go right back down here 
and then we're gonna go right here and then we're gonna just paint a big giant circle right over the center section of the character go god mm. I can click my watch right now I wouldn't but that is the alarm for me to quit so unfortunately it is quitting time oh man it has been fun all right there we go and you can do the same for this section right here too and it really depends on how you want your circles to come in there but it's all circles now we can take the shadow that comes off of whatever you have so like this arm right here you can have a little shadow of that and then for this one you can have a little shadow off it as well and then of course for the the, the horn I think I want to make it smaller for that one I thought that song was going to get better. <laughs> I was like, maybe it's, that's just the intro. <laughs> that's not a bad song. Wrong. That was probably one of the worst things my ears have ever heard. All right, there we go. With the circle tool, uh, vector, to, well, not vector, but uh, rendered, uh, rasterized a bunch of circles into the drawing. Which is what you saw me do just then. I'm probably going to do the same for the other arm because it goes up a little higher and I don't really like that. So we'll see how that goes. However, I'm not going to do it in a live stream because I feel like I'm tired as hell and I need to do some other stuff before my day's out. Like, for instance, play some video games. That sounds extremely productive. However, I will be working on this offline so you don't have to worry about it. It'll be offline. <coughs> But it'll be worked on. And I will also save that section for um I guess I guess I can post it. If I record any of it, I will I'll post it as a time lapse because nobody likes to be sitting around waiting all day for art. So yeah, I'll post it as a time lapse. And if I can get a hold of this uh the, the beginning of it, I'll add it in the time lapse. And that would be goldy. If I can't get it, then it's fine. I'll do a time lapse from where it is at right now to the finished product. Or if I live stream again, I'll record, and then that way I can still do a time lapse, and I'll just use the um, I'll use both of the, the 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 streams for that. Either way, I think there will be a time lapse at some point. Okay. Yeah. All right, save it. It has been saved in one spot only, but I can't save it in two spots on here, can I? It's been saved in two spots. I'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, I'm just going to play Black Ops 3 like I normally do. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on the, the tutorial video if you liked it, and I will have a lot more of those to come if uh well it's gonna be mostly the same stuff but still a lot more of it <clears throat> a lot more streaming at least uh in the future so yes please and that thumb right there see that thumb you just hit that thumb yeah black ops 4 i'll play black ops 4 <laughs>